Welcome to Build a Drone Reviewer Podcasts, Rotor Talk Live, Episodes 59 and 60, DJI Mavic Air 2. Got that coming up next. In episode 59, we discussed the DJI Mavic Air 2 and did an in-depth analysis and discussion. Ron Marcus and I looked at the DJI Mavic Air 2. We discussed who the drone is right for, and we also shared updates on the Femi X8 SE 2020. We'll roll that broadcast in its entirety, and then between broadcasts, I'll tell you about episode 60. Page. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live, Season 3, Episode 17, wow. your Mavic Air 2 extravaganza tonight. I am joined by Mr. Marcus Crawford. Ron hey, Crawford. One second, Bill. My wife needs me. I'll be right back. Go for it. Go for it. Now, I'll, 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 continue, I'll continue pontificating here to everybody. Um, Ron Brown has the evening off as he was... Uh, moving back from his, not rental, but the place where he stayed while um, while they were rehabbing his house. So he's going to, he's maybe joined the chat in here in a little bit, but we're going to be joined by Lauren. He'll be, he'll be with us tonight. I hope everyone's doing great. Got a good night's sleep. We sure did. Lauren, Lauren is here. We're going to welcome him in. Lauren, welcome. How are you this evening? Uh Still tired. <laughs> Still tired. <laughs> well, you know that's kind of kind of like par for course. You know, I think we're I think we're all. I was telling Marcus I went to bed about one o'clock last night, so it was like you know, like amped up, like big time. So, well, Marcus, how are you this evening? Good, good. Sorry about that uh, little no. uh, delay there, but uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, just like what you guys are talking about. Uh, what a night last night. And, and uh, you know, my, my, my friend Ryan Duvall described us all in the chat. It's just like a bunch of uh, a young, excited young teenagers. And that's kind of how I felt when, the, when, the, when that drone came out. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then today, actually, I got to go out and fly a little drone. I did a, and Lauren, don't laugh. I did a comparison <laughs> test. I did a comparison test between the Esheen EX4 and the Mavic Mini. And you guys are just going to have to guess about which one came out on top. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm having a real hard time. I'm not even going to guess on that. <laughs> I'm having a real hard time, Marcus. You know, that, that's, that's, a, that's a video that's going to uh, bust the charts on YouTube. I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. Lauren, how are you this evening? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh it was kind of a busy, hectic day, and uh, happy to say I handed in my resignation for a place that I was putting in time. It was uh, kind of nice because I told them that I was just going to consult there for the winter, and guess what? Winter's over. And they said, well, you sure we can't talk you into staying? And I said, well, uh, only if you can uh, convince Mother Nature not to have spring because I when it's summertime, I need to be out flying and taking pictures. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, we had we had a, one of the most significant events that has happened to us in the last two months at the Heroes household today. Guess what that was? We got a case, and I mean a case. My wife ordered a case of toilet paper from Office Depot, and it came today. Okay, so this is like this is like one of those. Bells and whistles and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I told her, I said, you know, when we get halfway done with that, let's order another one. So we're not caught like this again. So we're going to be good for a while. So if any of you guys need some toilet paper, I'll hook it up to my drone and I'll fly it to you. How's that? <laughs> you you have pretty good range if you're getting it to me. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, yeah. Well, maybe that Mavic Air, too. I mean, we're supposed to, you know, it's supposed to have some good range. So and that battery life is good. So who knows? You never know. So, um, but I want to welcome everybody in the chat tonight. Um, it was crazy last night in both shows, so we really didn't have a chance to do any of that. Stephen Ewing is here. Uh, Ted Bowman's here. Um, let's see who else. Greg Pittman. Dumb Tube, thanks for joining tonight. Scott's RC World. DeMarco is here. DeMarco, you're still alive. That's a good sign, okay? Ah. 
That's a that's a very very good sign. Hopefully you didn't. Hopefully the couch was comfortable last night. That's all I'll that's all I'll say about that. But got a lot to cover tonight. We're going to spend a majority of our time on the Mavic Mavic Air two. You know, one of the things that I wanted to, to touch on right away, and I, I know Lauren verified it for us last night, but I got verification from DJI regarding AirSense. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up on the screen so you guys can go ahead and see that. Now there's going to there's a link in the in the comments for this or in the, in the description for this so you guys guys can see it here. Now this is from DJI Newsroom, uh, Newsroom News. Uh, get ready to up your creative game with the new DJI Mavic Air 2. I'm just you guys can go ahead and read this at, at your leisure, but um, I want to go ahead and highlight this down here. Um, this is in accordance with DJI's industry leading 10 point evaluating safety vision published last year. Mavic Air 2 is also DJI's first consumer drone designed to include air sense technology, which provides enhanced safety by warning drone pilots of other aircraft nearby. Air sense uses aviation technology known as ADS B to receive signals from nearby airplanes and helicopters and displays the location on the drone pilot's control screen. As these other aircraft approach the drone, AirSense will warn the drone pilot with messages, sounds, and vibrations, enhancing the pilot's awareness and ability to move the drone safely away. So this is 120% confirmed. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It's on there. I, I, I'm very happy that DJI pinged me back because I wanted to be able to share this with everybody. So number one, that's, that, that's, that's some good news right there. Uh, would you, wouldn't you guys agree? Absolutely. Uh, DJI didn't really play that up in in their presentation at all because there's uh, all the controversy about uh, what's going on with some of the bills happening in the U.S. about, uh, um, shall we say, monitoring the drones. And uh, there's a lot of people don't like what uh, what's being proposed, and I can't say I blame them, but... Uh, there's a lot of people that don't understand that this is ADS-B in and not out. So it's it's not going to be broadcasting your location, but I think it was a better idea that they didn't uh, mention it too too much because they've already said, you know, in, in the late fall, early winter of last year that all drones over 250 uh, for North American market would have ADS-B. So, you know, it's not a big surprise. Well, no, and you know what? It's um, You brought up a good point. I know Marcus brought it up last night as well, too. You know, a lot of people, you know, need to know about this, okay, because planes have both transmit and receive capabilities. You know, all, all aircraft, whether you're a Cessna or a Piper Cub to a Boeing 737, have to have transmit and receive ADS-B. This is only this this is only a receiver, folks. Okay, we don't transmit our location anywhere. So, but you know, I like it for the simple fact, you know, as I explained in both on both shows last night. You know, I I live over a pattern where a lot of times the Air Force chooses to go to the Air Force base, and I love to know when planes are in my vicinity. I mean, it's 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 really a good thing. So, I mean, I can't say enough about that. But Lauren's right. Because a lot of people, you know, are up in arms about, you know, the remote ID uh, proposal from the FAA. So what do you think, Marcus? Yeah, I mean, we discussed this a little bit last night, and, and I'm in total agreement with you, Bill. Uh, I'm, geez, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I related the story about flying right next door to me the other day, and, and, and uh, a helicopter came right over the top of me, literally right over the top of me while I had a drone in the air. Now I heard him from way off and I dropped down oh to about 50 feet off the ground. So I was, I was plenty low, but uh, with ADSB, I'll know about that guy before I can even hear him. And likely you just, then there's no chance you're going to be in that situation. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, it, 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 it really kind of lends itself to, you know, just total safety. I mean, that's, that's exactly what that is. I mean, you know, no more, you know, cranking your neck around, looking here, looking here, looking here. I mean, you know what, you hear a plane, you know, and sometimes your ears kind of can de deceive you sometimes and sounds and everything. And I mean, it's, you know, 
and even visually, I mean, even if, if your vision is, is great, I mean, it can deceive you at times. So this is good. This is, this is, this is a good thing. And it, no, no, not ahead. only that, but if you, uh, what, once you actually get a chance to use it, you'll, you'll wonder why we never had it before. I, I can tell you because I, I've used that on a lot of our, uh, commercial drones and stuff like that. And, uh, like the enterprise drones have had that for, for quite a while now. And, uh, I, I can sure say that I absolutely love it. If you've seen a lot of my videos and stuff like that, I like to get into, uh, into canyons and, and things like that. And, and you get in some of those places where you, uh, you, you really can't hear an aircraft coming until they're really right on top of you. But when I can see that coming for miles away, it, it really, really helps out. And, um, uh, uh, again, like I say, once, once you get a chance to use it, you're going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, it's like, you didn't know, you didn't know you missed it until you had it. I mean, that's, that's really, yeah. really in essence is, is what that is. One of the other things that I wanted to talk about tonight and, you oh, know, hold on, Bill, one sec. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Just, just one sec. I, I, go ahead. Go for originally it. I wasn't planning on being on tonight, but Bill said, Ron's not going to be on. So I, Figured I needed to make out the threesome, but that being said, I'm drinking beer tonight. So <laughs> go for it, okay? All you know, this is an adult show. We're not. This is not a children's show. So Jason, Jason, where you be, Lauren? There you go, Marcus. <laughs> you know, Lauren, if you, if you can drag that Matrice, you know, put that up in the air, and maybe you know, send one to Marcus's way and then one to my way, that would just be fantastic. You know, maybe we can work on that. All right. <laughs> you know, have, have like a capability of recharging those batteries in flight. So I will, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm glad I'm, we're, we're very thankful that Warren's able to join us tonight and he's able to pontificate freely because the, the Mavic Air 2 is out. One of the other things that I noticed today and Lauren could probably speak to this too is I went out there and I looked at the accessories that are available on on, on the website, on DJ's website. Everything is showing of, is available, but what it looks to me, and maybe Lauren can 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 confirm this, is it looks like everything that's out there is in the Flymore kit. Am I right, Lauren? Uh, yes and no. There okay. there is some stuff that uh, that will be coming out, and uh, a lot of the standalone accessories. If you want to buy those. Uh, it, it's actually a pre-order, and uh, those won't be – you can order them, pay for them now, but don't expect shipping until right near the end of May. Okay. What about, what about shipping as far as – I know, because they said when you placed the order, it was 10 to 15 business days after your payment is approved. That sounds about right, because basically May 15th is when uh, – is when like retailers aren't supposed to uh, sell anything until May 15th. And normally they coincide uh, DJI deliveries with uh, when retailers allowed to sell. So um, yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. Hey, so just as a point of interest here, I just went to the website just to see what they're saying about estimated ship date. And so it's consistent with what we saw yesterday it says estimated to ship seven to 10 business days after payment com confirmation. Uh, so that hasn't changed. And the reason that I bring that up is because when the Mavic mini was out there, Hey, if you didn't get in there early, your ship date got pushed uh, quite a ways out. So the, the, er the people that ordered early got theirs much quicker than some of them later, but this still appears to be consistent with what we saw yesterday. Okay, now Drone Master says here, this is interesting. DJI is said to be making a mount for tablets and iPads, I heard. So um, that's a, that's a, yeah, it's going to be an interesting design because it's not, you know, how it, that you can get like the Mav mounts and it would fit in, in you know, the Spark, the Mavic, Air, original Mavic Air, the Mavic Pro series, the Mavic 2 series, you know, that mount would fit in there. And like all those ones, uh, aftermarket ones that were on Amazon, that allowed fit in there. But that's, you know, that's something you got to completely throw that out because, you know, it's on top now and it's and it's that that clasp system. So that's going to be real interesting to see how they do something like that. 
So, because, so, Bill, I'm thinking about that. So if you had one of those old mounts, that clasp would still clamp it. Right. But I think the disadvantage would be you're really going to be top heavy then. Yeah, that's that 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 is definitely a thing. Lauren, I was wondering if you could speak to this. Do you know how strong that? I know you know when you pull that up. I mean, is that like a plastic or is that a metal or what? This in the both. controller. It's a combination of both. Okay. The, the rods that come up are metal, and then your piece across the top is plastic encased. Okay. The the piece that goes across the top uh, and uh, those rods that come up are actually part of the antenna system. Um, don't know if you're aware of that or not, but uh, yeah, I did. I was I was aware of that, but no good. That's yeah, that's good. that's part of the antenna system. And uh, uh, on that note, a couple of things. Uh, there was a firmware release today. I don't know if anybody noticed that, uh, but there was a firmware release. And I, I know the question is going to come up sometime tonight, so I'm going to head it off early. Is with uh, should be the next firmware update. It will be compatible with the smart controller. Okay, that's a good. That was a question. I know you. You're glad you headed that off because that was one of the ones that I had because you know we read that last night out there um, in the notes when when we were going through things during the during the show last night. So, I mean, that was, you know, that's, I mean, wow. I mean, that's incredible. I know for a lot of people, I know for me, you know, I'm the only one here tonight that really is, is a, is a, you know, smart controller affection audio. Maybe we can get Marcus <laughs> to, to hit the buy button for that smart controller because, and, and, and we've been trying, Ron and I have been trying like crazy to, to, to bring him over, Lauren. I don't, I don't know if we'll be able to do that or not. Hey, you just made me think of something, Bill. What's that? I know of a Canadian drone store, and with the advantage of the dollar exchange right now, that might be the place to buy one. Well, there you go. <laughs> another, another thing, uh, we were kind of looking at that uh, today, is uh, the things, you know, if you're going to order, absolutely definitely order the fly more because we went through and we costed out Canadian dollars, costed it out. If you were to buy everything separately in that Flymore kit, it would actually cost you $400 more than the Flymore kit. If you were to price it all out. So uh, like the batteries are, going, uh, are what? I think it's about $161 Canadian. Uh, yeah, they were 110 so, US for batteries, yeah. Yeah, so... So that that being said, uh, you know, just put the price of those batteries. Never mind anything else that comes with it. And then you start adding in the filters. You know, it, it's definitely absolutely worth the, the buying the fly more. Well, and you know, and it was, and it was, and and I, and I probably didn't say this last night, but it was it was very astute of DJI to keep that. I know for US under a thousand dollars US. I mean, that makes I think that makes a big difference. One of the other groups I was involved with, uh, or am involved with, uh, it was funny because a lot of people were saying, uh, no, no, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. And uh, Well, two, two things. Uh, I had to tease them a little bit, and I said, well, I'm going to get one because I get it for free. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that stirred, stirred up a hornet's nest. But the, the other one was that, uh, you know, it, it's, well, it's not as good as a Mavic 2 Pro. And it, I had to explain to him, it's not meant to be as good as a Mavic 2 Pro. It's kind of your intermediate. You know, if you buy a car, uh, doesn't matter which brand you buy, you can buy different levels in, in each different brand. And, and this is the same thing. If you don't have the dollars to go up to a Mavic 2 Pro, uh, but the Mavic Mini just ain't good enough for you, then this is kind of the in between one for you to consider, you know. So yeah, I mean, you know, it really, it, it really fits that progression. Now, I got to say this. I don't know if you guys saw this, but I saw I saw this picture today, and it was it was absolutely it cracked me up. Um, it was a picture of a Mavic Mini standing up, and on the screen was just the beginning part of the video. And it says, "Someday when I grow up," it had, was the caption on it. Okay, because it looked like. It, the Mavic Mini looked like a baby Mavic Mini. Let me pull that picture up. I don't know if you guys 
saw that or not. I actually seen that one, Bill. I, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna gonna pull that up here because yeah, I, I let me get to the group here. Um yeah, so uh, you know, it just is that, that I think they they pulled that off really well. They built up a, a lot of uh, excitement over that introduction, and uh, boy, that was fun uh, being with on uh, uh, Zeno Nation or Mavic Air Two Nation last night with. Uh, with Bill and and DeMarco and Ron, it was uh, that was an exciting event. Well, that was that was a lot. You know, I'm I'm so glad that we did that last night, and you know, it was it was great because both the, the my pre show did well, and then uh, when we went over to um, Zeno Nation, it did extremely well last night. So uh, you know, I think that lead and our efforts in building that up, I think, really helped get a lot of people to watch, and that was great. I mean. Well, I think we had like over 180, 190 people at a time watching, which was insane. I mean, that, that, I've never seen numbers like that on live streams before. But here's that picture. I just absolutely think it's think it's a hoot. Absolutely love this. Um, you know, one of the other things that I wanted to go over tonight was, you know, it's it's really interesting who DJI decided to give drones to ahead of time to do reviews this time because. You know, I was I was expecting to see uh, getting a notification from, from Ready Set Drone from Kelly. I was expecting to see something from Rick Smith from Drone Valley, and didn't see those. I mean, you know, that was that that was really kind of curious because more often than not, you know, especially Kelly gets them, and that that kind of you know, it's kind of a head scratcher. You know, you know, oh, there, there was a lot of lot of guys that I was expecting to see uh, videos from, but there was absolutely nothing. You know, and it, it kind of made me wonder because especially after the uh, little trick DGI pulled today, which didn't impress me at all, uh, Haya posted something in my group and uh, DGI had requested him to take it down because he wasn't allowed to put that up until May 1st because the YouTubers had first kick at the cat, which I oh. thought was kind of like wow you know and then uh uh so that that being said some of those youtubers that we were expecting like billy kyle for example you'd yeah. almost think that he should have one but he didn't have it and he rightly admitted to it although i'm not sure there was a lot of the youtubers that uh, put out their thing right after or shortly after the release they put out their their two bits, but I I thought, why are you even bothering if you don't have the drone? You know, yeah, if you're commenting on a drone that you don't even have. So wh why are you doing it just to make yourself relevant? You know, yeah, well, that's you know, yeah. probably true. It, yeah, yeah, it is. You know, the ones that I saw, I Justine was out there. iPhone do, um, Aldrin from Flight Path had it at, has has one out there, but I didn't see you know some of the other ones. You know, I haven't even. You know, I, I haven't been following Casey Neistat. I assume he probably got one, but I didn't. I haven't gone on to his channel. But I mean, the, the names that you think of, and I was also thinking of Dustin Dunhill, who I'm good friends with. Um, I didn't see anything pop up from him because I'm, you know, I subscribe to his channel. So you know, it, it was really kind of curious how they went about it this time because, you know, one, and one of the things that I've heard lately, and I don't know if you guys have heard anything about this either, is. They were favoring people who had a heavy leaning towards DJI in their YouTube channel. Um, have you guys heard anything about that? Well, you know what, Bill? I so I thought when we, when we were talking about that yesterday, I was thinking about that. But think about Aldwin. He just did a bunch of videos on the Autel Evo Two. On the Evo Two, yeah. So that kind of threw me. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it just you know, I, I'm just I'm I'm still kind of scratching my head over that one because you know you expect to see you know in you know the the business okay for example all right I'll bring up our good friend Rick Smith all right who doesn't like Rick okay you, you've got problems if you don't like Rick all right well hey, you know he, he does run on <laughs> yeah, yeah Rick does run on that is that is true Lauren. we we will we will say that because show whenever I have him on the show. They have a tendency to, to go a little longer than, than an hour. 
But one of the things that I have to say is, you know, his enthusiasm level is like a 13 year old. Okay. It's, it's through the roof. All right. And it's no matter what product he gets, which makes him, and plus having an electrical engineering background, you know, being an electrical engineer, you know, I would think that, you know, companies like DJI would, you know, really want to go after him. Well, I know that Autel has been sent, sent him the Evo 2 8K and the Evo, um, Evo Pro. So Evo 2 Pro. So, you know, see, he's been doing that. So I don't know if there's this push pull kind of thing there. And with Kelly, I mean, I, that's a real head scratcher because, you know, besides, you know, I know he's very much into, you know, FPV and racing drones right now, but he's still, you know, very much a DJI guy. And uh, it's really, you know, I, I'm, I'm still kind of scratching my head on this one because, you know, I'm waiting for these things to pop up and I'm not seeing them today. And I'm like, what's going on here? Hey, I haven't seen iJustine's yet, but, but I will say this, both Aldrin and iPhone do, they, I just thought they were really good reviews. They were very thorough. Uh, we got to we get, we got a really good overview of that drone out of those two. So I have to applaud their choice of using those two guys. I like I said, I haven't seen I Justine's yet, so I don't know. Yeah, I I I haven't seen I Justine's. I've seen um, uh, one of Aldrin's, and yeah, I, I agree. Aldrin did a good job on that. I mean, you know, it's like, um, you know, but you know the quantity. You know, I, I would also, you know, it, it's like. To me, it's like this, okay? When there's a lot of them out there, okay, I like to watch all of them and kind of digest it and come up with a, with an average opinion of what something is like, you know? And here it's, you know, pretty slim pickings as far as that's concerned. So I don't know. That's just that's just me kind of, kind of pontificating here a little bit. So, um, you know, one of the other things that I'm really excited about, and I know – um, I know DeMarco was real excited about it last night, too, is the battery life on this. And I know we've had discussions with Rick Smith about it. And, you know, Rick has talked to us, Lauren, about, you know, they can only do so much with the, that physical space inside that constraints of that battery. OK, there's only so many, you know, you know, plates that they can put in there. And, you know, they're just really limited. So to get extra time and, and a, you know, figure this, OK, that battery is physically smaller than a Mavic 2 battery, but they're getting extra time out of it. That's that's insane. Well, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room here. <laughs> As mentioned many, many months ago, and I won't mention who's who said anything, <laughs> but. A lot of that has to do with the new motors, new ESCs, and new props. It's a lot more energy efficient, and um, none of that. But I don't know if you watch Aldrin's uh, video on on the noise level as well, right? No, I haven't and, seen that one yet. Oh, that's a great video. It really yeah. tells a good story. Yeah, and uh, part of it is, is it, it's physically it's quieter, but the sound isn't as, as uh, obtrusive either. So. You know, it, it gives it a, a bigger impression of, of being even quieter than what it actually is because most people are, are not as bothered by a low frequency. It's a high frequency that really bothers people's ears. So um, th they've kind of continued that in the various other uh, drones in the uh, um, ever since they come out with the low noise props. That's, that's basically a lot of it is changing the frequency. Well, you know, someone just put in the chat, and this also makes sense, too, is it's obviously lighter than the Mavic 2. So, you know, that would obviously be a be a win in terms of, you know, flight time as far as that's concerned. Well, when you compare it to the old one, uh, the old uh, Mavic Air, you know, you're 50% you're more battery capacity than the old one. Uh, and like I say, uh, the 15 minutes of real-world flight time on the Mavic Air uh, wasn't really too tough to beat, you know. Um, it was a great drone for its time. It, it was kind of a first-time thing for, for a lot of things. Uh, but uh, really between the noise and, and the range and the uh, flight time, uh, that that didn't bode well for the drone. Other than that, it was actually, a, you know, a very, very nice drone. Yeah, um, you know, uh, and, and I agree. You know, uh, the, the big thing for me, was, you know, a lot of people and Marcus and I, you know, because we both 
had one. I had one for a couple of weeks to test out. And the big thing for me was, you know, everybody was complaining about loss of signal and having issues with that. And I never had that. It was for me, it was definitely that hot pitch wine from, mm -hmm. from, from the Mavic. I mean, that was just, well, I know my friend Ian Jones from over in Southeast England. I mean, that's the entire reason he sold this. He loved the portability and the form factor and everything and the video from it. But he said it was just, it was just, he couldn't, he couldn't fly it because of the noise. Hey, so do you guys remember the first time you saw that original Mavic Air? Remember how we ha all marveled at the small size of the thing? And then we saw the Mavic Mini. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, well, you know, and, and what's interesting here, and I want to, you know, kind of sandwich this talk in between here. All right. What DJI has been doing kind of like behind the scenes to set things up for for the for the Mavic Air 2 all right you know the update to the Mavic Mini itself with the with the with the firmware to enable you know those those camera features all right there was i mean that was like a dual purpose okay because you know those of us who know the Mavic Mini or it's like a godsend especially if you want to get in there and adjust your settings i mean that's that's incredible an incredible capability to be able to have that right now and the other thing, the other elephant in the room is the smart controller update to allow the Phantom 4 Pro V2.0 to work on there too. That actually played a purpose in it, okay? Because, you know, I had, I had emailed DJI support ad nauseum about that. I got, the, every time I got answers back, thank you for your inquiry, Bill. We have no plans at this time to update the smart controller you know, please, you know, watch Twitter for any updates. That was a constant message I got from them. And then lo and behold, boom, I had I had a subscriber sent me an email. He showed me screenshots. He said, look what I found, Bill. And he went out there and I was like, holy crap. And I downloaded it. First try, boom, set it up on my desk. And I, well, I put a video out about it because, you know, and I wasn't expecting to get a lot of views on it, but I just wanted to let people know about it. I mean, this is kind of you know, this kind of revs people up a little bit kind of a thing. And then now we get the confirmation, okay, well, we, we knew that the Mavic Air 2 was going to use the Fly app, okay? And then now we also get the confirmation that it's going to work with the smart controller. It's like, wow. Bill, I got a question for you. Yes. When do you think we will see the, uh, s uh, the second version, uh, smart controller version 2? I'm the wrong person to ask that question. I think Lauren's gonna Lauren's gonna leave right now. <laughs> That's why I asked you, Bill. That's why I didn't ask Lauren. See, I was I was what asking I, you, but I was watching Lauren. Here's face. what here's what here's what I think. Okay, and, and, and Lauren Lauren may, may smile, he may not, but I think we'll see it at the time of the Mavic Three. That's just my that that's my personal two cents worth. Okay. Um, I think we'll see it at the time of the Mavic 3. And I'm going to throw in a real kicker on this one here. This is just a wild prediction here, folks, okay? And look, I'm not – I know Lauren's, Lauren's drinking an adult beverage. I'm drinking water, okay? All right, here's my prediction, all right? That's going to be – and Marcus has his Diet Coke, okay? What's in, the co what's in with the Coke, Marcus? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My prediction is – you're going to have a smart controller be your standard controller for the Mavic 3. That's going to be my prediction. That's just that's just that's just off the top of my head right now, okay? I'm just going to go out there and say that because you know, you can see, you know, that that progression, you know, is leaning towards getting everything. Imagine this, okay? And, and think about this. That all of DJI's consumer drone, we'll, we'll say consumer drones, okay? One controller works all of them. All right. Imagine that. All right. And, and imagine, you know, once you have that controller and you buy another drone, you can order the option without the controller because it works with it. I mean, it's am, am I wrong here, guys? You're, you're not wrong. While we're on the subject of controllers, Bill, one of the things that I'm excited about, about that new Mavic Air controller is uh, anytime I use the, the current DJI controllers, I got to take the cover off of my phone. Now you you're not going to worry about that. You're just going to clamp it in the top and uh, and you'll be good to go. Well, you know, I'm getting I'm getting a lot of it. Demarco agrees with me, 
And Mike Roach said, you know, bigger screen. And I, well, I agree on the bigger screen. Okay. I, I think the screen could be a little bit bigger as far as, um, you know, being able to see things. But I got to tell you this, okay, Marcus, you know, it, it really, it, it just, it, it excels when it's in the sun. And I can tell you in Florida, it is very bright down here. I mean, you know, what afternoon in the, in, in my backyard, because my backyard faces West, you know, that sun is just beaming down here and it really just stands out. There's just, it, it, it's just, it's just so good. I mean, in crystal clear, you don't have to have no hood, no mo- no nothing. It works great. It really does. So that's yeah. what I'm wondering. You know, Ted Bul- Paul Bulman is bringing up in the chat. He's uh, uh, got uh, low vision, and so he always has to use an iPad uh, when he flies so he gets a, a bigger screen. I'm just wondering about the brighter screen, uh, Dr. Bulman. Would that brighter screen, would that help? Because just like Bill was describing, it, it is – it is way brighter than like your iPad or, uh, you know, way brighter. And Larry Boggs just put in there, it's better than my my newest phone. And he's right. You know, you know, my my Samsung, my Note 10, you know, it's, it's getting to be, you know, it, it's starting starting to get old, as quote unquote. I haven't had it a year, but, you know, it was pretty high in terms of the number of nits. But the number of nits that, that are on the smart controller and I'm, I don't know the exact number it's it's just off the charts it really is and you know one of the things that i really like about the smart controller is you know to go ahead and do a screen recording it's it's not that hard like on an iphone or even android i know my note 10 has it built in but i'll tell you what all you got to do with that smart controller flip it down hit start record boom and it you know your tally it's running down there it's down there and it's not you know, up in the corner and, and blocking important information out. And then the nice thing is you can save it to your SD card and just put it on your computer. And, you know, that's the first thing that I do after after a flight with a smart controller is I get that I get that out on my computer. I mean, it's a, and it's, what's real nice is it records audio, too. So it records everything you say. And, and the mic on there is pretty decent. Now, you got to have it up here. OK, you got to have it at a level like this. You can't be doing this and expect it to to sound good but if you have it up here like this you're going to hear it pretty good so i'm digressing a little bit we're we're kind of like talking no, on let's, the world. let's talk about the issues with the smart controller go for it okay uh it's all well and fine if you're going to do uh just run-of-the-mill generic stuff but what about uh third-party apps that's 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 a very good issue lauren that's, well you know and also that's, like that's one of the reasons why myself um i i don't own a smart controller and i can't see myself ever owning one in, at least not in the immediate future as it stands now um uh, i use a, the nice big uh, large crystal sky and yeah because it's you know got these things here so with age uh, I, I like having that that bigger screen, but uh, again, even with that crystal sky, uh, I'm limited on the apps that I that I can use with that. So when uh, like I've kind of done a little backdoor in mine, so I can add add some apps in there. But uh, there's some apps that I want to use that, uh, frankly, I have to go back to using my iPad just. To, to use those apps so just- well you know i know the other thing too and you probably you probably know this it's a process to be able to update the dji go 4 app on there okay because there's no there's no way to natively there's no push to it and you you have to go through a process and our good friend david from kluge tech time you know put out a great video on that if anybody wants to know how to do that go out to kluge tech time david put a great video together on and that's a real pain in the butt whenever you have to do that okay that you know you know i do agree about the third party apps lauren i really you know that is a real pain in the butt and you know if and if you're used to using other apps than what, what's on the controller natively then you know that's a problem all right um you know and also updating the go for app and now the um obviously the, the fly app will be on there too so you know I'm hoping that DJI maybe gets the hint that when they come out with Smart Controller 2.0, that they they address some of these things because I know it's been 
a real pain point for a lot of people. Like if you go out to the forums and, and you know what Lauren was just pontificating about and what I've been pontificating about, you know, you'll see it ad nauseum out there that people just, you know, they want to have the ability to download third party apps. They want to have the ability to update the DJI Go 4 app on the fly without any issues. And it's a process. I mean, you got to set aside some time to do it. Go ahead, Marcus. Any, you know, I, I don't, if Lauren knows, he can't say, and Bill, you probably don't know, but I'm, I'm wondering about uh, the future for the Crystal Sky Monitor. And I can tell you, I had one for a while, and this has been, I don't know, probably almost a year ago. And one of the issues that I had with it even then was that the CPU was not quite up to speed on it. It was starting to slow down. And it even started having problems consistently running the Go4 app well. Uh, actually, not anymore. They did a firmware. Uh, I, I'm going to assume you got rid of yours over a year ago. I did, yes. Yeah, because about a year ago, they did a firmware update. And uh, part of that is it unloaded a lot of resources that weren't needed, one. And two, it dealt with the... Uh, with the overheating issue that they had with the super bright, um, there, there was like basically in, in Bill's country, uh, those things would get almost to the point of meltdown. So, uh, what they did was, uh, in the firmware update, they unloaded a whole bunch of extra overhead garbage that, uh, made things run cooler and, and much faster. So, well, that's good. Uh, but like I said, I'm wondering, you know, is it something that they'll update in the future or is the Crystal Sky uh, just uh, passive technology? Although I would think in in some of their um, industrial drones, the Crystal Sky might still be something. Oh, absolutely. And, and not only that, but like I find that the, the lag time when I'm using, and I'm using an iPad Mini 5, so like newest, latest, greatest, but the lag time uh, between my Crystal Sky and my uh, my iPad, <laughs> uh, my Crystal Sky has got almost negligible lag time, whereas there there's probably two or three tenths of a second with the iPad Mini. You know, right. maybe not quite that much, but it seems almost uh, instantaneous uh, with my Crystal Sky. And that's part of the reason I love it, because like I say, I do a lot of close-in flying, so. Um, it's but, a bright screen, especially the, what do they call it, the ultra bright with 2,000 yeah. nits? Oh, holy cow. That thing's like daylight. Yep. yep. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up, because it was back in, in the questions quite a while ago, but I didn't get a chance to address it. Uh, somebody was asking about uh, precision landing. Uh, one thing... Uh, a lot of people don't realize, and, and I've, I've said it time and time again for the, those that have listened to me, but uh, you really need to know how to do a precision takeoff in order for precision landing to work. <laughs> and because uh, I see it time and time and time again, I, I teach a lot of people how to how fly and, and get their first flights under their belt and stuff like that. And, and it's, you know, as soon as the drone gets in the air, it's, it's like zoom, away you go. Um, the proper way you're going to take off is if you're going to use the auto takeoff, then uh, then use, use your auto takeoff. But let it sit there and hover for a second. You've got a status light that's on the back of that drone. Mm -hmm. Wait until you get your flashing green, okay? Uh, because quite often when you take off, it, it will be flashing multiple different colors. So... Wait until you get your flashing green and then, you know, go up until you're about 10 or 15 feet in the air and then move off from your take your takeoff point. And that will give you your best results for, for your uh, precision landing. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Carry no, on. no, that's a good, that's a good point because I know a lot of people, I had gotten some questions about that too. How, how's it going to be, going to be there? And I said, well, you know, I said, it's it if you do it right and this and I Lauren I did a video on that okay and I did a test doing it you know just taking it off manually just heading straight up and not letting it stop and and doing return you know let it try to land by itself and then doing exactly what you said and the difference was night and day mm -hmm. 
It really is. I mean, it's that simple. Go ahead, Marcus. Well, I just, because I was messing around with it today, uh, I am amazed at how close the Mavic Mini, even though it does not have precision landing, it, it gets within consistently within two or three feet and sometimes right on its takeoff spot without any kind of precision landing. That's how accurate DJI's Marcus is. try doing that method that I just described because mine lands on the on the pad every time with the mini yep. even, even without the precision landing feature yep. yeah yeah I'll try that try, try that method like say even if you use your auto takeoff or even if you do the manual takeoff right get it up about four or five feet in the air Wait until you get your green status lights flashing because that means it's got its precision GPS lock, right? And it's all stabilized. And then go up until you're 10 or 15 feet near and then move off. Uh, and I think you'll see a drastic increase on precision landing. Well, what I do know is my Mavic 2 Zoom, it, it'll, hit, it'll hit it right on the dime every time. I mean, it just... Uh, It'll just come down in the exact same spot. And I'm used to that technique that you talk about, Lauren. I always let that thing get up, let it get a good look at where it took off from. And as you say, then you move off. And boy, is that thing accurate. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's like, you know, it, it's not rocket science here. It's really kind of it's really kind of easy to, to do these things. I mean, you know, uh, Marcus, you know, it's like, you know, and, and I've tested it over and over and over again with that. And, well, you know, I know colors for maybe some other drones might make a difference as far as, as a precision landing is concerned. Because I've watched you try with the Xeno 2 and, and with the Femi X8 and, you know, your, your trials and tribulations with both of those drones. But then, you know, with almost all DJI products, I mean, you know, it's like it's it's almost always if you do it right, like Lauren says, you're pretty much going to be on that center spot almost all the time. I mean, you know, unless it's the really windy day or something's really askew with the weather, you should be on that spot. You really yeah. should. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, no, no holds barred with something like that. Um, you know, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about, you know, uh, you know, we, we kind of, we touched on a little bit last night was OcuSync 2.0. Um, you know, and that's something, you know, that was one of the, I would say, and Marcus, I think you'd probably agree with me, that was probably the number one thing that people wanted to see on this drone was OcuSync 2.0, right? No, there's no question about it. You heard that over and over again. Yeah, and it was like, you know, I, I am just, it, it's it's an incredible home run because if you remember when we had Rick on, and I think it was probably about a year ago, it was probably about maybe May last year, we, we talked to him about this, and he said the reason that they don't have them on the smaller drones was, at the time, the physical layout of the drone, it wasn't big enough to handle it. Well, problem solved here this time with this, okay? And, you know, having having OcuSync on there, you know, and, and I have to tell you this, people, you know, if you don't haven't had a Mavic 2, okay, or a Phantom 4 Pro V2.0 and you haven't had OcuSync, you know, you're in for a real treat with this, okay? I, I can tell you that right now because your reception is going to be crystal clear i mean you know when if ever i do a live stream okay i i have zero problems with live streams you know i'm a thousand 1200 1500 feet away no problems at all because of ocusync 2.0 and the communication there is, is just absolutely stellar so people are you're in for a real treat with it if you haven't had it before i mean it really it, it's just it's it's worth it's worth the upgrade all by itself in my opinion okay because that's a significant improvement over what we had with the original Mavic Air. Am I right, guys? 100%. That and the battery. Yes. The battery life. That battery, battery, battery on the original Mavic Air, 15 minutes. I mean, you know, you were like you you were you were like wringing a rag dry to get 15 minutes out of that battery. You know, and it's like and we've all said it before, you know, it's like in Lauren too, you know, you're up you're getting great pictures. You're getting some great video. And then you look and then you see it's beeping and it's telling you it's low battery return to home kind of thing. And you're ready to cuss up a storm right there because, you know, you're in the middle of getting some great shots and you got to come back. 
that's right. just that's just a real kicker. And this time around, you know, 34 minutes, which probably will translate maybe to 29, but still, I mean, that's that's nothing to sneeze at, guys. That really isn't. Yeah, no question about it. I was, I was laughing when you were talking about battery time because I remember the spark. And holy cow, you'd just be getting into the flight, you know, and just, oh, yeah, we need to get a picture of this. And then it would say, oh, time to return to home. I'm return to home. I mean, that's just – that's a real that's a real kicker for this. Well, you know, and, and I got to say this, th this is going to be, I think it, it, this drone, you know, and I saw a lot of Ron's post today. I, I chatted with him a little bit on Messenger, didn't didn't actually talk, talk to him. But, you know, you know, I get the sense from Ron and correct me, guys, if you're wrong. And Ron, I hope you're watching tonight. Um, Ron is really I haven't seen him this excited about a drone in a long time. Well, would you agree, Marcus? Well, he said as much last night. It was really funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, that that applied to all four of us on that show. We were like uh, the proverbial kid in the candy store. It was pretty funny. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, guys. If if you want to look at some great pictures, look at look look at Lauren's Facebook page. Look at this. Look at these kind of pictures that he gets. I mean, you know, he gets he gets some incredible. Look at this. Hey, what, what river is that, Lauren? I was wondering when I was looking at it. Uh, that's the Highwood. Got yeah. Yeah. That was the Highwood. I, I, I was doing some flying in there. And, uh, uh, yeah. And then that is beautiful. The back one, Bill, the, uh, that uh, bluff right there. Holy guacamole, that, that is dramatic. Yeah. That's that's the type of things that I like to do. I, I mainly do landscape and wildlife. Like there's wildlife shot. That that one's not a drone one, but um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but that's that's what I like to do. And, and uh, I usually do a combination of both uh, ground and, and drone shots. And that's like, it's like I say, the reason I got into drones is, is because of the photography I like to do. So, um, and as you can see from those valley shots, that's not something I can do with a regular camera, you know. That's true. Right. And when, I, when I've taught uh, taught uh, photography lessons, and it's like I talk about the drones, and, and I say that uh, yeah, because it would be a great shot if only I could stand in that raging river, and that's just a classic example of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Well, you know, one of the other things and I wanted to touch on before we close up shop tonight is the camera, all right? Um, okay, I don't know about you, both of you guys, but I think DJI hit a home run with this camera this time around, okay? Um, looking at the specs, I, I did kind of did a, a deep dive and looking at those specs today. <laughs> you know, I had, and this was one of the number one questions that I had during the day today. People were asking me, Bill, is the camera on the Mavic 2 Pro better than the camera on the on the Mavic Air 2? Uh, that was probably my number one question today. And you know, and, and I said, uh, and I told him, I said, look at the specs, guys. I, that that was my answer to everybody because, you know, when you when you look at those specs on that, and you know, obviously, you know, when you look at the promo films from DJI, you know, you see everything's been enhanced, and everything. But that's why you need to get some real it in the hands of real reviewers, you know, obviously, you know, we haven't seen a lot of footage from I Justine and Aldrin and, and everybody, but I'm sure we will. But, you know, when you get to see some real footage out there and get to see, you know, like scenery, like Lauren shoots and, and things like that, that will tell you, that will give you your biggest clue as to how that camera really is. And, and for me, one of the things that I judge, one of the people ask me, how do I judge the quality of a camera? And I said, for me, okay. It's when you get it out of the box, you shoot it and you take a look at it. You don't add anything to it in post. And that to me tells me how that camera is because, you know, I can make, I can make those pictures. I can make pictures from now the, uh, from, from some of the lower end drones look fantastic. Okay. You know, when I get put, put my thing in, in the, in the Da Vinci, it, I can, I can make it sing like a bird. All right. But, you know, when you're not doing that, when you take it raw off the drone and you just put it out there and you look at it, you know, and you know who my greatest judge is, is Valerie. You know, I'll have her come in 
and I'll have her. I said, I said, what do you think of this? And she's like, wow. Okay. And, and, and I said, you know, I didn't do anything. I, I just, this is exactly the way it was. And she's like, wow. And I think this is the kind of thing we're going to see with this camera guys. I really do. And to, just so you know, like I, I'm an old school photographer. I've been doing photography for 45 years and, and uh, I, I'm not one of these guys that likes to sit in front of a computer and, and dick around with a picture and make it all, look all pretty. You know, um, uh, like I'm old school and I say do it on the camera and so like doing those pictures there's almost nothing done to those those are pretty much straight either out of the camera or out of the drone and I really really can't emphasize like with drones the importance of using their filters you know um, myself every time my drone goes in the air or any of my drones goes in the air, I have combination ND polarizer filter on it. And though that polarizer, if you're not familiar with it, that really brings out the blues and the greens, which for for doing the landscapes and stuff that I like doing, uh, it really helps make those colors punch for you and, and makes your colors come alive. So just a little tip for you. I got a question, a question for Lauren. So what I've never understood about the, I understand how a polarizer works on a ground camera because you're right there and you can turn it. But on a drone, how do you get it adjusted? I mean, do you fly up, look, bring it back? No, uh, actually, if you, like I use the Polar Pro ones, uh, mainly because they're the best. Uh, not cheap, but they're, they're, they're the best. But the uh, Polar Pro uh, circular polarizers, there's actually a little, there's two marks on it, one that's on the frame of the filter and then one that's on the filter itself. And that can tell you whether or not that uh, is in sync or out of sync, right? Uh, the other way you can tell if you're not using the Polar Pros is you rotate that filter until your skies are the deepest blue. And that's where you want to use it. Now, the, the only caveat on that is that uh, you've got to understand how light works because that's what photography is all about. And depending on where the sun is from the direction you're shooting is how effective that polarizing filter is going to be. That makes sense. I mean, that's, right. a good, that's a good tip. Because yeah, yeah. If, if you're going right into the sun, for example, it is going to have less effect. If you're shooting, if you've got the sun at 90 degrees, it's going to have the most effect. So. Well, here's a question. And, and I know, you know, both Marcus and I are probably in the same kind of realm. I know Ron is probably more bent towards, you know, being a photographer at heart. You know, I don't know how long Ron's been a photographer, but he, it's been, it's been a lot of years. He's been a photographer like you, Lauren. You can't underestimate the importance of being able to, to have a lot of these manual settings that we now, not only the mini, but more importantly, it'll be on the Mavic Air too. Am I right? Well, if you're going to use filters, right? That's the only way to make a filter work is with yeah. controls. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Lauren? Sorry, I missed the question. I'm answering questions in the, in no, the chat. No, no, that's fine. Um, with with the manual controls that they've added recently, like uh, through the DJI Fly app for not only the mini, but It'll end up being on the air too. Um, you know, it's important to be able to adjust those right, especially when you're using foot filters. Am I right? Yep, absolutely. Like uh, to me, that, uh, it was a real game changer when they they did that last uh, update on, on the Mavic Mini, give, giving you full control. Like that. That's that's just makes things just so so much better. Um, on the ND filters, guys because there, there's questions coming left, right, and center here. Um, ND filters, depends on whether you're doing photography or video. Um, like, use your ND filters to get down to your 180 rule for, for video. So basically, if you're not familiar with that uh, 180 rule, is if you're shooting to get the best cinematic shots, if you're shooting 25 frames per second, right? If you're set at that, um, or I'm messing this up to totally, <laughs> but you want to have your your uh, 
your frames per second at twice the speed of what you're shooting at for your video, right? So right. if your video is at 25 frames per second, then you, you want to shoot at 50 frames per second. And you have to speed that up or slow that down using your ND filters or lack of ND filters. Now, when it comes to photography, you want you use your ND filters to slow down to create different effects. Uh, like, at, for example, if you were shooting, say, something like a waterfall, and you want the water to just really flow over with no real crisp, hard uh, water droplets and stuff like that, then, you know, you'd be using the real, real high, something like an ND-1000, right? And, and you're going to have about a one-second exposure, right? So um, then that's... Yeah, thank, thanks, JC, 150th. <laughs> that's what I meant. So anyway, um, that's where your ND filters c come into effect um, on the photography end. Um, Again, I always, always have my polarizer on. Um, Cliff Taunton posted a question, and I, and I don't know the answer to this. Does the Air 2 have a variable aperture? No. No, okay. No. All right. No. All right. Well, you know, we're kind of kind of wrapping wrapping up things here. And, um, you know, one of the things before before I get to close, I want to thank everybody who joined the pre-show last night. And I want to thank everybody who went from the pre-show over to Mavic Air 2 Nation last night, as it was temporarily called, and, and joined us because it was a great time on on both shows. And, and I got to say this, and I, and I think Marcus would agree with me. I know Ron would as well. And DeMarco, uh, the chat, you guys were just as, as tonight, you guys were spot on uh, in the chat. It, it was just, it was, it was electric. It, it kind of, it really kind of pumped us up a ton. So from me on behalf of, of Ron, you know, Lauren too, and, and, and Marcus, um, you know, we really want to thank you last night for such a great time. You made it, a, you made it very enjoyable for us to do this. And then, you know, when the next one comes, we're going to be doing it. You know, we're going to kind of, kind of flip things around and have a pre-show on, on Xeno nation. And then we're going to do, do the live stream from here and have the, have the party here. So, um, you know, it was so much fun. I mean, it, it really was, it was just such a blast. And, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Okay. Marcus closing thoughts for tonight. Well, you know, uh, everybody, just uh, stay, stay safe. We're, I, I'm hoping that we're on the downhill side of this whole virus mess that's going on, but continue social distancing. Be kind, be kind, be kind, as Bill likes to say. And uh, then, yeah, get out and fly your drone a little bit. It's going to be 87 degrees here tomorrow in Idaho, so almost summer-like weather. And uh, if I'm going to fly a drone tomorrow, I'll probably get up early to do that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's all good. Get out, fly your drone, and have fun. Uh, Lauren, have you got any closing thoughts for us tonight? Uh, just one thing, going back to the cameras. Every, anybody know what the best camera is? The one you already own. That's it. No, the one that you have when you need it. Ah, <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, like uh, anytime you anytime you can take a shot uh, when you need it, that that's the important camera. So the one you have with you, the one you have yes. with you, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well, you know, um, I, I want to thank Lauren for for coming in tonight and joining us, and I hope Ron's had a relaxing evening because you know he's going from his where he he stayed uh, while his house was being rehabbed back to his house, and it's kind of moving things back, and it's been a probably hectic and chaotic for him, and. Uh, wish you all the best, Ron, and hope you enjoyed watching the stream tonight. And, um, you know, hope hope everything's well. Um, you know, I want to echo what Mark, Marcus said, okay? We're still going through this this crap, okay? And, you know, it won't – let me put it to you this way, okay? I found out somebody who graduated with me from high school is on a ventilator right now because of COVID-19. I had a text from one of my best friends in high school. She told me that today. And there were tears in my eyes, okay? Because this doesn't discriminate. This doesn't care how old, how young you are, uh, whether you're rich or poor, you know, nothing. It, it will hit you. So those of you who, who still feel a need to throw shade to people, 
wake up because you know this is real this is life and death for people and a lot, it's affecting a lot of people financially as well too it's really hitting in the pocketbooks and if you can give to help organizations that help people do so if you can go out safely and help people and if you're allowed to do that do so you know continue to follow what your local governments and, and state governments and, and, and country tells you to do because believe it or not their safety and your their your health is their number one priority okay that's pretty much any government uh, around the world that's doing that so I, I hope you guys just just continue to stay safe you know we're, we're hearing it's not going to be much longer for a lot of us here in the united states which is good news things are going on a downhill curve which is good um you know they're working on on, on solutions to uh for treatments right now vaccines still going to be a ways off but I'm hearing lots of promising things as far as treatments are concerned. So, you know, just hang in there, guys. You know, we'll we'll get there. We'll cross that. You know, we'll cross that 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 plateau someday. You know, and it will be a great day to fly again. But until then, everybody, stay home and stay safe. Take care, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening. And oh yeah, here's another thing before I absolutely close this. Okay, these guys here, like you know, and especially Ron and Marcus, you know make sure you hit that like button for them and Lauren too on, on my show, because it's not a reflection of me. Okay. I'm just a, I'm just a third of this show. Okay. They're two thirds of the show. So when you hit that like button, you're hitting it for both of them. So, you know, do that. Not only here, make sure you go back on Xeno nation. If you didn't do that last night and do that as well, because that's a really, that's a huge thumbs up and that helps us out tremendously guys take care and we will see you next time. In episode 60, we discussed the DJI Mavic Air 2 and how to get ready for it. I was joined by Ron, Marcus, and Lauren. We did an in-depth discussion with recommendation, tips, best new drone practices, accessories, and also great comments and suggestions from those in the audience, along with a critical tip that Lauren passes on right at the beginning of the clip. Now, we also gave a update regarding the Hubson Zeno 2 and also the Femi X8 SE 2020. So without any further ado, let's roll that broadcast in its entirety. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live Season 3, Episode 18. Uh, pretty much a DJI Mavic Air 2 extravaganza tonight. We're going to kind of help you all get prepared for the Mavic Air 2. And you know what? I'm just going to go who's over to my right. And Lawrence to my right. How are you this evening, Lauren? Not bad. Busy day. Very busy day. Uh, spent most of today in training. Um, and it's fortunate that uh, the training I took today was uh, directly related to what we're going to talk about tonight. So, well, that isn't that. That's just like perfect timing tonight. That that's absolutely fantastic. Mr. Ron Braun, how are you this evening? I'm Bill, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, you know, I had a good day. I didn't do anything drone related today, just the kind of moving and, and things like that today. But uh, I did read an article in the Drone DJ where the um, you can get the Altel Evo, the, the hard case bundle with two batteries, the hard case and all for only like ten ninety nine. So that's my drone refer research for the day, the, uh, the, the, the deal on the I'll tell Evo too. And I, it was an article in there also about what we discussed last night about the um, the Mavic Air 2 being uh, iPad or tablet compatible. So that was on there too. So, um, and I got a little news about Apple selling the um, the Mavic Air 2 and we'll, we'll get to that later on. But I'm going to throw it to my good friend Marcus who probably had a busy day at the field. Well, well uh, actually I didn't get out and fly it all today. I wanted to. Uh, it was kind of windy. Uh, Ron, I got a question for you. That Evo that you were talking about, that's the Evo 2? Evo 1. Evo, Evo 1. 1. Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense to me. That makes sense. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I actually spent a bunch of time uh, editing video today, which is uh, kind of goes hand in hand with what we do. We spend a lot of time at our computer uh, editing videos, but uh, yeah, I did not get a chance to get out, and I'm not going to get out tomorrow either because it's uh, we've got high wind warnings tomorrow, but uh, maybe Thursday I can get out and fly a little bit. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's about it, uh, Bill. Yeah, I had trials and tribulations trying to upload a video, but it, hopefully it's successfully uploaded, and after tonight's broadcast, 
you guys will be able to watch my it, it is one you don't want to miss it's my test flight after the mavic mini firmware update it's a good video so and i got two in this series so stay tuned all right we're gonna we got we're gonna have like i said we're really we're gonna help you guys try to get ready for the mavic air 2 hopefully before next week's broadcast we all have them in hand of course lauren probably already has his in hand but that's a whole nother story. Okay. Lauren's like, I, don't know. I know nothing like Sergeant Souls. Okay. We're going to, what we're going to do, we're going to hit a little bit. First of all, want to get a Xeno 2 and Femi uh, update. Marcus, um, you have any information on either of those? Yeah. So Xeno 2, nothing. The original Xeno, they updated the Hubson X app. That was one of the things that I wanted to get out and test. Uh, today and did not get the opportunity to do so. Uh, with regard to the Femi X8 SE, so they had a pretty hot price on it, as, uh, as a lot of people know. It was, uh, Banggood had it on sale for $399, and with their code, uh, it brought it to $347, which was a, a screaming deal. So now they've raised the price uh, to $408, but the little discount code is still active, but it only takes it down to, I believe it's $379, which uh, that, I think that's a, still a pretty screaming good deal for, for that drone. And, and uh, I know both uh, Ron and Bill have uh, links on any of their videos uh, to buy that thing. And you might find a link in one of my videos too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's that, that's definitely something you want to want to pay attention to. Now, I, I know Lauren, we're gonna we're gonna just we're gonna touch on something else too. There's another release going on this week, believe it or not, and it's from DJI. Believe it or not, okay. Ooh, Matt, and, Matt, and, Matt, you know, let's let's get a drum roll going. Brrr, boom, okay. It's not it's not it's not a consumer drone, guys. It's the M300, and I'm gonna go ahead and share an article that I have on it. And um, let's go ahead and share the screen here. Share the buy button too also, so we can go ahead and purchase that thing. Well, it, it, that's the kind of that's the kind of buy button that, that, that we, would, we would need like uh, to sell probably, oh, I don't know, maybe half my annual salary would, would probably go uh, to, 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 to buy that. Okay, new Patrice 300 specs leak days before Cyber Workhorse launch. And I'll go ahead and just throw the picture up here. And I was actually talking to Lauren, and one of the questions I had right away was, okay, you notice where the props are on this, okay? The props are, props are underneath. Lauren, why don't you tell us why they're underneath? Two reasons. Uh, can you make that a little larger, Bill? Can you yeah, sure. Well, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, two reasons. Number one, undermounting the props like that increases your lift capacity. And uh, number two, if you kind of scrub your mouse around the very, very top of the drone bill, you can uh, you can see that uh, it's gone to full 360 obstacle avoidance. And by putting those uh, the, the sensors high and the props low, uh, just improves the accuracy of the uh, obstacle avoidance. Um, uh, another thing on the back, you will see the RTK sensors. Those are the little round ones that are off the back arms. And then on the front, you see the antenna for your uh, much improved, or I shouldn't say necessarily much improved, but uh, I wish we had it in consumer, um, OcuSync 2.0, that... Uh, Increases the range out to about uh, 15 miles. 15 miles? 15 kilometers, sorry. Uh, 15 kilometers is still pretty, nah, wow. Yeah, that's still. Uh, what 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 the transmission system does it use, Lauren? It, it's using OcuSync too, but it's uh, it's got a raised power level. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. And Lauren, any, any inkling of um, this is going to be, um, when it's available, I mean, you know, it's going to be released this week, but is it, is this something that will actually be at dealers available to purchase by the end of the month or? Uh, that I can't talk about. Okay. So, All right. That's, that's cool. That's cool. No problem. No problem. All right. Well, you know, you know, you, 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 th this is, this is a pretty incredible drone. 
you know, the 200 series was pretty, pretty, pretty good, but it, it did have quite a few shortcomings. Um, do you think they did any kind of improvements with the battery on this, Lauren? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. yeah I think they, yeah. that, that, cause I know on the 200, I know that was a real, real pain point. Um, the, the, there was a lot of issues with that. Well, they did. And, uh, like they've gone to an IPv6 weather rating, which is like much, much better than what they were before. Um, so like, yeah, much bigger battery on it. And you've now got a flight time of 50 minutes. Um, just by the way, in case anybody's wondering, uh, the only thing I can discuss is stuff that has been publicly released by at least somebody. <laughs> so uh, I'm just re repeating what is already uh, out there, uh, just if you know where to look for it. But uh, gotcha. Uh, anything that I that is not publicly released that I don't know about, then I can't talk about it. Just FYI. So no, okay, Lauren, are you allowed to talk about the size of that Matrice? There's nothing in the picture to give it any perspective, so I can't I can't gather how it's, large it is. Is that, is that is that? Can you speak to the size? Yeah, it, it's a little bit bigger than than the uh, say something like the two ten. Um, um, the uh, is it drastically bigger? Not really. Not really. It, it's it is. I'd ballpark at ten to fifteen percent bigger. How much bigger is it than say what we'll see give a drone that a lot of people have never even seen a Matrice in person? How how many times bigger is it than I say a Phantom Four? <laughs> Man, a lot of people considerably, have never, a lot considerably. Of people have never seen a Matrice in real life. So no, no it, it's considerably bigger. Um in the same if you're to put the with props and everything, if you were to say make a box around a Phantom Four and then make the box around a two ten, um, you could probably fit four to six Phantom Fours in the same size. Okay. Yeah. So at least four to six times the size. I believe the biggest drone I've seen in the field is the Inspire. Oh really? Yeah. That well, this... I've, seen, I've seen in the field. The, not, the, not, the not two, ten, yeah, the two ten is, and this is like I say, ten to fifteen percent bigger. But the the two ten is a little over double the size of of the uh, Inspire two. Okay, that that gives me some some idea of the size. That so uh, we could we could call that a large drone. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You want to see a big one? Have a look at the six hundred. Yeah, the M six hundred. That's a big. I actually, I actually saw one of those down at uh, Florida Drone Supply, and you know how I, I, I asked, you know, Janelle, the owner, and I said, "Well, how do you take that?" She says, "You need a pickup truck." Yep. <laughs> you need a you need a pickup truck. I mean, you sh you should see the case for that. Okay, the the case was would would has you have to have the bed of a pickup truck to fit the case in it. That's how. We well, you have a you have a pickup truck, Bill. You should have brought it home and flew it over the lake behind your house. I would have loved to have done that, but that, yeah, yeah, I would have had to sign my life away for something like that. That's and you and you, and you may have got a phone call now from the neighbor. Somebody said there's a helicopter flying over the the you know the lake. Yeah, we Actually, don't want that right now, especially after the other night when oh you know, and I shared this with the guys. We had we had gunshots at twelve thirty a.m. the other night and. They found 18 shell casings about about a thousand yards or so um, east of our house. So yeah, that was that that was a fun night. It sounded like knocks on the door at 12:30, and then we kind of realized what it was, and then uh, kind of got the skinny from some people in the neighborhood and what was going on. So that was that was an interesting evening. Let me say that. And so was the so was the lack of sleep that we had that night. That's for sure. We're gonna move on to the Mavic Air 2 here. All right. And, you know, there's a lot to talk about. And one of the things I thought I'd like to do tonight with everybody is help get everybody prepared for the Mavic Air 2. You know, um, when you get a new drone, it's more than just going ahead and hitting that infamous buy button, as, as we so often and fondly like, like to say. And how Marcus has that index, that, that index finger is just, that, that's all it does all day long. And I've heard Sarah has to, like, tape his finger together so it doesn't doesn't start hitting that mouse button like that to hit the buy button because it Mar marcus is just so used to it 
But what I thought I'd like to do is to go ahead and just, you know, kind of go through some things. One of the first things I know Lauren told us, touched on this last night, and I know Hay put an article out on it today is about, or, or I know Drone DJ did, and I, I get Hay confused with, with that because he's no longer with him. But Drone DJ put an article about the batteries on the Mavic Air 2. And Lauren, I, why don't you pontificate? Because I think this is pretty important information. Well, the key, key thing is, like today I spent, uh, I just got to think, can I talk about this or not? <laughs> Let's just say I had a discussion with DJI today about the, the battery issue today. And unfortunately, the person I was talking to wasn't extremely knowledgeable about it. And uh, But they really didn't want to acknowledge the issue yet, but... I kind of got the impression that they, they were aware of it and they were working on the solution for it. But uh, what it is, is that, that you get your batteries from DGI. And if you click the button on the top, which is your power button, if it doesn't light up, that means your battery has not been initialized. And... Um, to actually initialize the battery, you have to give it its first full charge. Uh, but the problem that we came across was the fact that do not, and I repeat, do not do your first charge using the gang charger if you buy the Flymar package. Uh, the reason for that being is it, A, it may not initialize, or B, it may brick. Uh, so do... Uh, charge the batteries one at a time off the charger. And after you've done your first initial charge, you're fine to use the, the gang charger. But the very first one, charge them individually. Yeah, take the time, as painful as it is. But uh, once those are, are initialized, then uh, it, it's not an issue. But if you do have a problem, um, the DJI support in Europe is aware of it, and I'm hoping the, the guys in North America get to uh, get up to speed on this as well. I'm told that it's going to be fixed in a future update, and uh, it's very possible that by the time you guys get your drone, that they have already fixed the issue. The key thing is to, uh, if your battery doesn't light up when you hit it, when it's out of the box, then please just do the single charge first time. Okay. This is important information, and I wanted to start kind of start things off with the Mavic Air 2 talking about that because I think that's important for everybody because the last thing you want to do is to do anything to brick your drone. Okay. That's, that's, Thanks, that's Marcus. <laughs> that is the absolute last thing you wanted to do. Um, <laughs> charger up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, Marcus. Mark is our, our Canadian interpreter uh, today. <laughs> Mark Marcus did our translation from Canadian to American there, and it said "gang charger equals um, um, uh, Canadian for charge hub." So, either way, <laughs> don't use the the gang charger, or the charge hub. Um, first go around, guys. You know, use the single charger. Uh, do one each one battery at a time, and then from there on out, you should be good to go there. Okay. And, and I think that's important to know that. Now, there's been a couple of other things out there, and there's a couple of articles that Hay put out today that I want that I wanted to share. And one of them is on the 8K hyperlapse, and um, so it creates a bumpy video with dark shadows. And I'm going to go ahead and share the screen and put this article up here. And I want to talk about this here for a little bit. Um, now, have any of you seen this article? Have you guys seen this bill so i i watched uh, dc rainmaker did a really good video <clears throat> pardon me about that whole thing and uh he he goes into great detail about it uh and and it is interesting but what what i find kind of odd is if you look at D dc rainmaker's video yeah you really see what he means it's it's shaky and so forth uh uh but like uh, uh heinrich uh, over at uh, Tech Drone Review, did an 8K uh, hyperlapse with his, and you don't see all that shaking. So I'm not sure what the difference is. And I also watched DC Raymaker's video, and Mike Martin says it, it, it's an excellent video. 
And uh, you know, when he when he put on 10 and EP, it, it had none of the issues it had on AK. Um, it, it worked fine. Now maybe this could be related to the memory card uses we talked about last night. Yeah, so explain that, Ron. What he said was that that because the 8K takes longer to write to the memory card, that they can only go down to a one shot. Was it every six seconds, Ron? Right, and, and oh, for yeah. the for the 8K, but, but the 1080p would go down to what two or three seconds or something like that. Right, and yeah. he said that's why. So there wouldn't be that big of a difference between the shots. Therefore, the 1080p looked better. But like I said, go over to Heinrich's channel, Tech, Tech Drone Review, and look at the one where he's using 8K to go around a castle. And boy, his looked really good. And also, it's not uncommon with time lapses that they bump the resolution down. For instance, on the GoPro Hero 7, if you do a time lapse, it bumps it down to like 1440K from 4K to do the time lapse. So again, uh, no matter what card you use, uh, it, it's not uncommon with a lot of smaller cameras, which again, the camera in, in the Mavic 2 Air, we would consider a small camera, it's not uncommon they bump the resolution down to 4K to a lesser resolution to do their um, time lapses. So, um, you know, uh, but but as DC Raymaker said, hopefully in future firmware update, DJI will be able to fix that and you will be able to do that 8K um, hyperlapse without any... Uh, what what would you word, word the shaking was it shaking the right word Marcus Unstyled. yeah kind of, kind of bumps and so what yeah. it was is is in between those six seconds the the drone would move a little bit right yeah. a little bit of a mountain you could actually see it in the frame and what's mentioned too he also flew in good weather with with light wind so it wasn't uh it wasn't weather conditions that caused this it was totally internal into the camera no the, the other thing that you got to keep in mind is that. Uh, 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 Marcus had pointed it out that uh, you've got every six seconds between shots, and that that's your right time, and that's a limitation. Uh, it's a hardware limitation because you're writing 8K, um, and um, if you go to the 1080 hyperlapse, you go down to two seconds of memory serves me correct. So uh, that gives the appearance of a lot smoother video. Um, and that six seconds uh, delay that you've got on, on the 8K, uh, that, you know, like the drone can move a little bit, the camera can move a little bit in that six seconds, and that, that makes it pretty hairy. <laughs> um, personally, I don't see a lot of this as issues they couldn't fix with a firmware update, but, uh, again, part of that is uh, to improve it, have that fast uh, SD card. Now you know. Here's, That's a lot. <laughs> I was just I was just gonna gonna talk talk about that, Marcus. You like you like a you like Sven Gali. You're reading my mind here. Okay, you know, you know my first, very first thought when I saw that. Okay, and by the way, it is an excellent video. Okay, I didn't get to see Heinrichs. Yeah, I, I am gonna gonna watch his. And but you know, my first thought right away, I'm thinking. First thing I'm thinking is IMU, but then I saw it really wasn't that much. So I'm saying, no, it's not IMU. And my second thought was SD card. What kind of SD card was he using today? Um, you know, th those are the kind of things that, you know, that kind of stuck in my mind. And, you know, and I'm glad we had some discussion about that. So I think that's something I think, you know, be aware. I think this is something to be aware of. All right. And then with that, and I think this is a good segue to talk about the SD card. Now, I know Lauren's pontificated about this, and, and Marcus has actually purchased, but let's spend a few minutes on this, because I think this is really important here, okay? <laughs> yeah, Mar La Lauren is pointing down to Marcus, okay? Marcus, go ahead and take the lead with this, because I know you and Ron did some dig deep diving into this. Well, I'm going to ask for some help from Ron, but we, we went on uh... – so what we were looking for, Lauren, you know, after our discussion last night, we, we were looking for something uh, that was someplace in between this and and this. And and so Ron and I were both looking on Amazon at the same time, and Ron found one that was, I believe, 120 uh, uh, right speed, Ron, wasn't it? 
Uh, no. Um, what happened is, well, we you know we looked at the cards you have. What's the, what's the say this card you have that's about sixty dollars on Amazon? What's that yeah. called again? Extreme Pro. Yeah. Extreme yeah. Pro. Okay. Well, we found a a slow a, a slower say this called the Extreme, and uh, it had like a ninety right and like a one sixty read. And then we found an Extreme. Pro, which has the same name of that, but it's it's not the same specs. And uh, and I'm and the first car I mentioned is I think less than fifteen dollars. Now the Extreme Pro that we found, kind of a red and black card, it 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 had it still had ninety right, but it was a little faster on the read. So as, as what we could say, we couldn't find any card that had a higher on Amazon that had higher than ninety right speed until you got to the card markets just showed there was kind of nothing in between in, in, in the right speeds and and ron to to point out that it was just a, a a step up above the one that dji is offering on their website which we i think we read only had a 60 right speed yeah some yeah something like yeah so here's the here's the sixty thousand dollar question guys all right let's let's ask the first one because i know a lot of people are probably like ron and i and you know when we hit that buy button we got that sd card that dji had out there is that going to be a good enough sd card yes or no well well I, obviously if they're selling it for the mavic air i would assume they are but i'm looking at that right now bill i just looked on the on dji's website just to make sure we're giving people the right information and it transfers at 160 megabits, which that's the read speed, but the write speed is 60. And Ron is correct, he's refreshing my memory. The one that we found on Amazon was a 90 megabit write okay. speed. And I'm telling you, I think, because it was pretty reasonably priced too, it, it was about 15 bucks, wasn't it, Ron? Something well, like we, we, we found the, the two, two extremes. The extreme regular was like under 15, and the Extreme Pro, which both of them had the same rate speed of 90, that was just a little under 20. So for a hair to 20, you can get the Pro, and you can get the regular stream for like around 15. And the, and the big difference that we could see was the read speed was a little bit faster on the um, on the non-Pro version of the card. And then the, so this is uh, under 20 dollars for this the better card we mentioned here, as opposed to a little over 60 for the card Marcus showed. Yeah, yeah, and not only that, as I mentioned on last night's show, uh, you can get away with the 90s uh, to a point uh, because it will use part of the internal memory as a buffer. So that, uh, but if you go for an extended shooting and stuff like that, then if that buffer gets full, then uh, that's when you're going to get your skipping and your blips and stuff like that. Right. Um, I, I, we may discuss the show last night, or Marcus and I may have discussed it after the show. Um, you know, if you're the type of person that, you know, you, you take off and you start your video, and you don't shut the video off until you land, say you got 20 minutes plus of video, that, that could, what, what Lauren just said, could be a real issue. But most of the time, I, I, I don't do that. I may be like, you know, if I fly for 20 minutes, maybe I take, you know, uh, uh, you know, three six and a half minute clips or whatever, I don't shoot like a big 20 sub minute clip. So I'm going to have less problems with that buffering than um, somebody that just starts recording and doesn't stop until they land after a long flight. You know, that's a good point, Ron, because I think a lot of people, when they first get drones, if they're brand new to drones, the first thing that a lot of people teach them is, you know, oh, you want to turn record on as soon as you take off because you, you'll forget, okay, because you'll get up there. Because I know it happened to me when I was a newbie, okay. I'd go out there, fly it, and then I'd uh, and then I'd look, where's the video? And it's like, mm, I didn't hit record, okay. So, you know, you learn that lesson early on. And I think, you know, that, that could be a hard habit to break. I mean, but, I, you know, it's something for me, it was very easy after a while because I realized being able to download things, off the SD card and onto my computer took a whole lot less time when I'm not trying to download 20 minutes for like, I, I, and I'm going to use like a four minute segment out of that 20, you know, it doesn't make sense to shoot all that and, and everything. So what's the consensus on, you know, I know the extreme pro is probably what we want to get. What are we looking for with right speed? Well, I, I believe Lauren. 
All, all I can say is, you know, there is some leeway. You can go with the 90s, because, but you're going to get buffering. And if you have a, a fairly long clip, that you are more prone to uh, possibly have skips. Uh, you know, like if you start shooting from the time you take off till the time you land, you're going to be more prone to it. Whereas if you're selective in your shots, uh, it, it's it's not going to be an issue with the 90 because of the buffering. That being said, if you uh, if you go with a real fast card, uh, uh, somebody was mentioning about the UHS-2. UHS-2 is really good provided, and I say provided, you get a card that is H, uh, UHS-1 compatible as well. If it's strictly UHS-2, uh, don't bother buying it for, for your drone because most of the drones only handle UHS-1. And I'm just going to finish that off. It, I, I spend the money on good cards because, as I said, I, I can't replace a lot of the shots that I do. But it's also future-proofing because as the drones get better, they're going to demand a UHS-2 card. Yeah, just in so the long term. That was my question, Lauren. You, you explained it last night, and I didn't fully understand it until you did. But the difference between a UHS-1 and a UHS-2 it's more than just what's inside the card. It's also the hardware and the connection, correct? Yep. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you, I tell you, it looks like you haven't even opened it up yet. I haven't. No. Uh -uh. Well, let, let's do an unboxing. <laughs> let's do an unboxing. Um, G -boy and and you'll, you'll, you'll see on the back, of that, uh, the back of that fast card, you'll see that instead of one row of contacts, there's actually two rows of contacts. So it's going to look weird and you're going to go, is this going to work? You know, but just long as you make sure that that card is UHS-1 compatible as well, you'll have no issues. Um, Gboy185 puts up a good comment here and I got it up there. If you're not sure of the speeds of your current cards, Google a free app called Crystal Disk Mark. It gives you a rundown of your read and write speeds. Gboy185, thank you for posting that. Appreciate that. That's a good, that's a good resource to have. So I, I think we've covered this. I, I think we've covered this pretty good, um, you know, because you want to look, you know, like Lauren said, you know, you probably want to go with a UHS two. You probably want to get a high write speed or a high high write speed on it. Ninety is okay, but probably you probably want to go a little bit higher than ninety. Um, so and guys, Ron and Marcus, did did they have anything higher than ninety on Amazon or not? Only the card Marcus has there, which was like, what Marcus, what's that card? 180 or? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, 275. Uh, so I don't know exactly what the right speed is, but it's advertised 275. And I assume that's read. Okay. Okay. Know, I, we, I forget. We looked it up on Amazon last night. I, I, I can't remember the exact number, but it was in the upper. It wasn't 200, but it was almost up to 200, the right speed of the card Marcus has there. Okay, so I don't know. Uh, tell me if this yes, is... Yes, I can definitely see the, 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 two, the, two, yeah, the con two rows of contacts there. And that's what Lauren was describing yeah. to us. And I'm actually familiar with that. In my Olympus camera, I have the same... Uh, I forget. what What's the U, U, UHS-2 or whatever? I have the same type. It's a bigger, you know, the full-size SD card. I had that to take... Uh, video on my Olympus real camera because you know we talk about bit rates here. The, the Olympus camera does it better than 250 bits or whatever, so it needs that type of card that Mark is just showed with the second rate of pins to uh, you know capture all that uh, bit rate. You know, th this is I'm, I'm glad we brought this up. And what I'm gonna do is after the show, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link in the description or more than one link to some cards that you know are going to meet dji specs that are uhs twos with the high write speeds so i think it's important because you know this is you know you need to focus on on, on that here is you know if you're buying this drone you want to get you want to get your dollars worth out of it and you know the whole thing is this guys okay you know we we can talk about battery life we can talk about sensors we can talk about precision landing we can talk about ocusync all day long but you know what if we don't get good video from when we're up there shooting okay you know it's it's like you know might as well be be a milk truck you know for all it's worth 
Hey, Bill, can I throw a, a comment in real fast? Something you said. Uh, you, you one of us, somebody or you somebody said. Well, they if DGI is recommending that that certain card from back there too, it, it'll probably work. And of course, it will work. But just because the manufacturer recommends the card or even sells the card, here's the story. I bought the Parrot and Nappy uh, uh, over a year ago, same same time Marcus did, and it came with an eight gigabyte. Uh, SD card and I don't know what the right speed was on it, but I noticed, you know, it, you know, I I just flew with it because it's kind of built in and in, inside drugs hard to get in and out. I just left it in there and flew with it for the first couple of months I owned it. So by the middle of the end of summer, I switched out and put a much better memory card in it. And I, I don't know what right speed it was, but it obviously was better than that car. And all of a sudden, my video looked much better. You know, like like it was like I got a new drone when I put this, um, you know, uh, new memory card in. Marcus. Hey, so you guys were asking me about the, I don't know if you can read that, but uh, it's 275, 100. 100, yes. I looked on the back of the card and it was there. So 100 is the right speed on that. It's only 10 right speeds faster than the the Extreme Pro, which was 90. So you're paying triple the money for a card that, you know, you, you gain a, a 10, um, whatever bytes of right speed but as lauren said those extra pins on the back the hardware itself mm -hmm. could, could, make, yeah. could make all the did difference you, did you look at the pins marcus i did I it. and yeah. you were away but we he showed the pins we got it on close up okay it, it, it's like a freeway as opposed to a two-lane road yep um, Ron makes a good point. The, the DJI recommended card will work, but it's the minimum necessary. Please just get the best cards and, and definitely. Marcus, how much was your card on Amazon? Uh, it was uh, right at 65 bucks, I think. Uh, okay. last, last night it was close. It was like 61 and change last night when yeah. we were doing the research. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Marcus, uh, if you could throw a link in the, in the chat so people can have that. And I'll definitely, I'll drop it in the description for later. Um, that would be great. Um, because I want to make sure, you know, if you guys, you know, are, you should be into this. Okay. Because you want to get that quality, you want to get quality video. You need to do this, especially for this drone. I mean, with some of the features and capabilities we're going to have with this, it, it's, it's a must. You really can't, can't mess around with this. You know, it's like, and, and here's one of the other things. This is one of my pet peeves is this ever since I've gotten drones, you know, guys will spend $1,500 on a Mavic 2 Pro, you know, smart controller, whole nine yards, everything, maybe even up, you know, even more than that. And they want to get a $35 case for it. And I'm like, okay, you know, it just, it's one of those things I just kind of like scratch my head. Okay. You're spending all this money for a drone and you want to get a $35 case for it. It's like, no guys, you, you need to spend the money, you know, get a good quality case. It's going to protect your drone kind of a thing. And I get, that's probably one of the other things that I have to say is you know when you're thinking about it and if you're getting the fly more kit guys okay the case that comes with it it's okay for taking it out to the local park or something like that but if you're using it for long-term use and if you want to get something out of it you know go out there and do some research i know gopro or um gpc gpc thank you lauren gpc makes great cases um what's the company from canada um uh, Canuck. Canuck. Nanook, I thought. I might be wrong. Uh, yeah, no, Nanook. Yeah, Nanook. 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 There's yeah I know, because Barry Markowitz talks about them as well, too. They're, well, they're good. Friends. Yeah, there's a good, they're, they're good cases. You know, and one of the landmarks that, that I've that now, and you know who taught me this was Rick Smith, was now, you remember with the Mavic Mini, if it sat in a case for a while, those back props kind of got bent, and you had to end up replacing them, okay? And one of his things is, he said, when you look for a case, it should, you know, with the props on, you can always take the props off. With a mini, it's a pain in the butt because you have to screw them on and off. But if they're, you know, if they're pop off, you know, like like the like a lot of them are, you know, you just pop them off. But the thing is, the, the props should sit below the level of the foam because even with the eggshell, you don't want want any weight sitting on that. And he says, you know, that's kind of important. So your case needs to be a little bit deeper in order to accomplish something like that. So that's just kind of like just some food for thought. If you guys are going well, out I'm there. I guarantee to you right now, when that Mavic uh, Air 2 arrives in the middle of May here, it will not sit in the case long enough to get the bet props, at least in my uh, 
in my house. And it'd be the same for me too. Okay. Uh, that, that thing will be out of boy, Ron. <laughs> it will it won't be packed on the shelf in that case. So but um anyways, thank you folks for joining us for this week in memory cards. This week in memory come cards. Back, come back next week again for another exciting show when we deep take a deep dive into memory cards. You know, we might <laughs> who knows, you know, and, and if if the timing's right. You might have a triple, a quadruple unboxing live next week, kind of a thing. So, won't Bill, that, won't that be real, real fast, before you go to your next segment, last night after the show, I was reading that uh, Apple is selling the Mavic Air too. And if you would have ordered it last night, you know, before the uh, well, before a certain, certain time, they said it would it would, it would arrive to your house on the twelfth. Really. Now today, of course, it's backed up in a day. If you ordered today from Apple, it would be one day later. But last night, when I first read this, and if you ordered that moment, they were talk they were talking about a ship a, a arrival date of the twelfth. Did uh, you order and, and you guys that pre ordered uh, one too? Right? Yours will arrive about the same time because, like I said, the release date for the U.S. was the eleventh. Um, so nobody is allowed to to receive them. No. Uh, consumers are allowed to receive them before the 11th, and in Canada it's the 15th. So gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Of course, so of course, of course, of course that, with Apple involved in the process, if they got in dispute with DJI, they could just buy the whole company with uh, just money they have sitting around on the shelf. And yeah, uh, Tim, and, Tim and Cook. Tim Cook could reach it into his front pocket and get the money out. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Frank Frank Wang would say, "Sold. Here you go. I'm done. It's all yours, Tim." I'm going to an island for the next. I'm out. I'm life. out here. We're 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 done. You know. <laughs> but you know that that's been that's been a dream of a lot of people for a long time. All right, kind of moving on a little bit. We're still on the Mavic Air two here. Okay. Now one of the other things that Hay talked about today was a 48 megapixel camera. Okay, now there's an article on this and I'm gonna go ahead and we'll get we'll share this one too. Well, while you're doing that, Bill, I, I found something that you were looking for earlier. What's that? <laughs> ah, all right. I don't know if you heard that or not. I but yes, I did. <laughs> I got a drum roll. Okay, how does DJI's Mavic Air 2 take 48 megapixel photos and at what expense, okay? Uh, the Sony IMX586 sensor enables the Mavic Air 2 to shoot 48 megapixel stills. Now, um, you know, he gets into some things here and what expense, however, this wizardry must come up some price, you would think, and you're right. It seems that when you take a 48 megapixel photo, the sensor has less light sensitivity available. The result is becomes clear in the shadow areas of the image. The shadows are darker and display more noise when compared to the same scene photographed in the 12 megapixel photo mode. At times, it even seems that the entire 48 megapixel is somewhat underexposed. So what you gain in resolution, you lose in low light ability, you get increased noise in dark areas of the image. The 48 megapixel photo option works best when a lot of light is available and the scene is evenly lit. Um, let's go down here because there, there's a picture posted here, and this is a 48 megapixel uh, picture here. And you know it's a it's a you know partly cloudy day and it's kind of there's some there's there's some darkness in here but the resolution is good I mean it's it's nothing to nothing to sneeze about what do you what are your what's your take guys It's good but anytime like they're using pixel splitting to get the the uh, the forty eight megapixel uh, which basically means where you would normally have one pixel they split it into four. The, the native mode is 12 megapixel. Um, if you do the uh, just a 12 megapixel picture and, and then do the exact same picture at 48 megapixel, you'll see that the low light performance is much better on the, the 12 megapixel because uh, it's not doing the, the pixel splitting. The kind of the other side of the coin is if you have a well-lit uh, area, like if you were out in open field, um, the amount of resolution you get is just, it's great. But it's just, when you do the pixel splitting, you're going to get uh, low light suffering. Well, you know, and, and I think, you know, it kind of, that, that kind of lends itself to the fact with that, that short paragraph that I read right there, this is probably best used on bright days in open areas. Would I would I kind of be correct on that assumption? Yep. 
So, you know, it's my opinion. So, (laughs) well, you know, I'll I'll throw in there too. I mean, I've had cameras for years. I'm going to call it pixel faking or whatever. And, uh, you know, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean, it, it, it you know, it's great for like a, a well lit landscape or whatever, but it's certainly not a feature that you would use just for routine photography. Say you're taking a picture of, I don't know, you know, uh, uh, your uh, a building or something near your house or just something random or whatever. You wouldn't want to take the, the 48 megapixel. That, that's for, like you said, you got some kind of great landscape or. You know, I won't even say a sunset because that's low light. You'd probably want to have the light the 12 megapixel image could get you rather than, you know, a uh, 48 megapixel kind of badly lit. So, again, I would say in, in, in full sun, like a landscape without a lot of moving things in it would, would be ideal for this 48 megapixel photo. But it's more of a, I don't want to use the word gimmick, but it's more of a thing you just use once in a while than than a daily uh, uh, way you want to shoot pictures. Uh, just my take. Well, you know, it's it's imp- it's important here to understand this because you know when you see when, when you watch watch a release event or if you watch the promo videos and you see forty eight megapixels, you're like boom right away. You, you know, you instantly think, oh, you can take forty eight, but you know, now you realize there's some caveats with this. And I think, you know, those of us that have been around drones for a while, we know that and we kind of expect that, um, you know, but somebody that's relatively new that hasn't been around drones a lot, you know, they expect, oh, it's going to be 48 megapixels. Well, you know, there's a little asterisk with this. And, and I think that's something that you need to condition especially people who, you know, let's say this is their second drone or let's say even, you know, somebody's, you know, just jumping into the hobby and buying the Mavic Air 2, you know, and getting a lot, you know, they're, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, which you really are for the, with this drone. But you have to realize there's some, you know, like Hay says in that article, you know, this comes at a price there, there, there is, there is some price with that. So, it's kind of like caveat emptor, you know, buyer beware kind of a thing. Hey, can, can, I ask, can I ask Lauren a question? And I, he may not know anything. Um, do we know anything about the file size of these 48 megapixel uh, images? And wait a minute, are these 48 megapixel images, are they just JPEGs or can they be JPEGs and DNGs or RAWs? Yep, both. And, and, and how, big is, how big is the file size of these 48? Uh, well, Realistically, if you do, uh, if you go through pixel counter, that they're not quite forty-eight megapixel. They're they're they're, they're cropped down a little bit. Um, to be honest, you got me stumped there because I can't remember looking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, it's something that you know, you would. I yeah, I, I just took a chance. You know, yeah, I, I you know, I don't always look at the file size of. Uh, like I say, I could take a sixty-four megapixel photo on my uh, Olympus camera doing a, a similar technique but I, I you know i know the file sizes are much bigger than a regular uh 12 mega well uh, i think that camera is a 20 megapixel but it's much bigger file but i don't remember how much bigger but sorry bill i, I didn't mean I no, didn't, no no I no 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 that's that's that's, that's good uh, Lauren. go ahead go ahead lauren i want to answer a question there by uh lon um he was talking about the uh the smart photo um the it's funny, we were discussing that today, and the smart photo works on, they've classified pictures into six different classifications, and uh, whether it's, uh, let's see, i got to try to remember the six, but you've got snow, you've got sand, you've got uh, grass, uh, you've got sunset, and I can't remember the rest, but what smart photo does is that it will kind of, automatically choose which setting you're trying to shoot for based on what it sees uh, out the lens and that's how, that's what the smart photo works for um, and it will it will automatically set for that uh, unless of course you are go to a manual mode but then you haven't selected your smart photo so hopefully I confused the hell out of you on that <laughs> well of course. <laughs> That's, that's what that's what you do best. No, no, that's what my that's, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, Lauren. I, I should shouldn't say that. And 
And, and, and I would say that's what my ex-wife did best. She confused the daylights out of me all the time. So, so just a quick answer to smart photo. So smart photo, it has to be activated or it's always activated? It, it's a photo mode. Right. Okay. It's one you would go in and choose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and then you would ha you would have to do less as an end user to get the proper photo. Yeah. It, it's – think of it this way. Oh, okay. <laughs> It, it's uh, think of it this way. It's it's uh, it's kind of like using your your uh, uh, Instamatic camera, right? Know? Right. It it uh, it does all the work, and all you're doing is pushing the button. That's it, the easiest way I can explain it. It sounds like an intelligent feature that Marcus Crawford should uh, do a deep Ooh. dive. Oh, oh, oh. that's uh, Marcus. That sounds like like a video for you. Well, <laughs> I do. Right. Say uh, that, yeah. It sounds like it's uh, right up my alley. I, yeah, that's tickled to death. Well, I, I just wanted to throw, and you guys probably saw. You know, I I put up on the screen. You know, this is this is the card here. So, and I'll make sure that that link, and and I'll get Stephen Ewan's link too, and put it in there for a you uh, for everybody out, outside the U.S. and North America. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But I think Stevens is probably good in the UK, but anyway, I'll, I'll post those links in the description after we're done tonight, so you guys can go ahead and have that. So, um, one of the other things that I kind of wanted to discuss tonight is also okay. You know, we open it up. You know, we'll get the gang charger or the um, um, what do we call it? Charger. 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 Yes, charge, we, charge. We, we put that to the side. We charge each battery individually. We charge the remote and, you know, and everything. We get the SD card in there and, and, you know, let's say those of us now here, you know, here's, here's another suggestion for everybody, you know, and, and this is something I got into the habit two drones ago is to format the SD card in the drone. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, that, that's, that, that's something a lot of people skip that and miss yes. that. And then I, you know, I'm having problems with the SD card. I can't think transfer things. I can't do this. You know, th the best thing is, and it's super easy. Um, you know, I know the Mavic Mini made it real super super easy to do that, and I'm sure that the Fly app is going to be super easy with the Mavic Air 2 to do that. So, you know, that's that's kind of like if you know, kind of like some food for thought. But one of the other things that we need to do, and you know, you know, it, it needs to be. Just, you know, one of those things right away that we do after everything's charged up and you're ready to go, okay, first thing you do, an IMU calibration, okay? That should be, without question, the very first thing you do, okay? Number two, a gimbal calibration, okay? And number three, and obviously you got to do this outside. Because doing it doing it inside and doing it good is a compass calibration. What, do you guys have anything above and beyond what I just said that we should do? Before we go out and fly, I'm going to open it up to everybody. Yeah, so, so let me start on this one, Bill. And, uh, I want to speak a little bit on our previous subject. Uh, so all of those flight modes that DJI is putting in there, and I know that there's a lot of things that people are saying that, uh, you know, well, this doesn't work exactly right or that doesn't work exactly right. I applaud DJI for going out on the cutting edge and giving us some of that stuff. And then, uh, like Lauren said, if you use it correctly in, in, in bright light is where most of that is designed to be, to be used, you're going to get some good results. So, you know, don't, I guess what I want to say is don't expect everything to work in every situation, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, but then uh, uh, with regard to your drone before you fly it, uh, I would... Uh, uh, for sure, on yeah, this drone in particular, we have to install the props because they don't come on the drone already. So, so look at those uh, the screws on on each of the props or the studs and make sure that they're in good shape. And uh, I would inspect the arms on the drone, look for anything possible uh, kind of damage there, and uh, and look over the gimbal and make sure that it's free and everything is uh, is working like it should. Uh, you know. Fire up your remote, test your remote, make sure that everything uh, is is working as it should on there as well. And even once you get the drone fired up, you may want to try some of those uh, different, uh, you know, tr try some of the functions on that remote 
to make sure they're all working. Uh, Ron. Um, I, I'm going to, you know, just uh, you point out about, the, you know, uh, you know, test the gimbal, whatever, uh, do the gimbal calibration uh, too before you fly the first time. And so you don't get that crooked horizon, whatever on the first flight. But, um, you know, uh, that's about the only thing I can add that Bill, you, you and Bill haven't already said. Lauren, anything you can add to that? Yep. You guys forgot one calibration. What's that? Do your controller calibration. Ah, uh, do, yeah, do your uh, controller calibration. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, it's fine out of the box, but why not, uh, you know, get rid of that last 0.1%? Well, you uh, know, that's a good point. And, you know, and, and just for those of you who have not done this before or not familiar with the time involved, these are very short in time, okay? They're not these you know, 20 minute sessions that you're going to take the compass. I'm sure all of you have done compass calibrations, but you know, the IMU calibration that takes maybe five, all, all these take less than probably five minutes. Am I right guys? Yeah. I don't I mean, do compass calibrations. We, we call that the DJI dance. The DJI <laughs> dance. Okay. Now Lon brought up a good point here with a single GPS and IMU. I no, what do you mean by single GPS? Um, well, I think he's talking about the single IMU. Okay. Um, okay. I checked the KP numbers, the satellite numbers before flying this drone. I think that's a good point, Lon. Thank you for bringing that up. I think that's, that's a, that's another, another good thing that you need to kind of, kind of pay attention to when you're going up there. Now, I guess here's, here's another question. Okay. Now, you know, one of the things for me and, and I saw, and it was out on one of, one of my Facebook groups today. Um, and I think it was my Mavic Air 2 Facebook group. You know, somebody was asked, should I buy a landing pad? Okay, well, no, it's just, you know, I get several of them like, oh, hand catch, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, not everybody hand catches. I can tell you that right now. Okay, Lauren is, Lauren is chomping at the bit. You know, I can tell right now, Lauren is definitely saying landing pad. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I, I use a landing pad, to be honest, there's times when I will do hand catches, but um very seldom that I do a hand launch uh, because there, there's just too many things can go wrong on a hand launch, uh, not just safety-wise, but uh, when it comes uh, to deal dealing with your RTH. Uh, so, and the landing pad, the biggest thing that that's going to do, it's going to keep dirt and dust out of places that you don't want it. So um, just, you know, Landing pad, actually, my landing pad is not a cheap one. Like I use uh, in in U.S. dollars, it's probably about fifty-five dollars because I use a weighted landing pad, um, and uh, and that's mainly because a lot of places that I go, you can't stake down the landing pad because it's all rock. Okay, but, yeah, uh, like when. When we went to Reddington Beach with Ron, and it's it's like it was so windy. It's like I had to drive my stakes pretty deep into the sand to, for that for that to hold. Uh, Bill's Boy well, Scout experience came in handy uh, that night. Yeah, I had to dig dig a hat hole halfway to China, but ooh, I probably shouldn't say that. Um, um, you know, Marcus also had a good thing too. Another thing, when you come back post flight, you know, get out get out your air duster, okay. And, you know, dust off the gimbal, dust off anything around there, you know, just off the whole drone. I mean, that's a good habit. I mean, especially like when we went to the beach with, with you know, um, you know, when, when Ron and I took our drones up at the beach. I mean, that was the first thing I did when I got home was get a can compressed air and just, you know, went over the drone because, you know, sand is probably one of the greatest enemies of drones. Um, you know, it can it's so invasive. You don't even know. It will get in places you don't even think it will get in. So, you know, that that's that's what I did right away. Just, you know, that and then the mat, too, because, you know, sand will get everywhere. So, you know, I left that in the truck, and I took care of that out in the garage before I even brought it in the house. Canadian drone pilot brought up a good point here, too, guys, okay? And a very basic item for new pilots, please remember to take the camera cover off before you power up the drone, okay? <laughs> I've seen a lot of videos. Now, when I was a newbie, I was guilty of this myself, okay? 
not taking that cover off, you know, and I'm pressing that power on button and I'm hearing the gimbal's having some problems working. And I'm like, why is it having some problems there, Bill? You hear a little grinding. Yeah, maybe that cover's on. So, so yeah, that's a good point, Canadian drone pilot. Thanks for bringing that up. I know, you know, it, it, it's like, it's like, you know, you, you have to make sure that that's taken care of. I mean, that, that seems to be a, a must. So, um, you know, I, I think that's something that's, that's important that you do need to do need to do there. So um, um, myself, like I've been flying eight years now and uh, all of my drones on my gimbal cover slash gimbal lock, I have a little tag. I, I went and bought at the nearest aeronautics uh, show uh, place. And I don't know if you've ever seen them on an airplane where it says remove before flight. <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually have that tag that that hangs off of my gimbal cover slash gimbal lock. Wow! And See, that's you know that doesn't that's matter scary. how long you've been flying. There's sometimes you get excited or or whatever. It's it's just like that's the weakest link on your drone is going to be your gimbal. So yeah, you want to you want to you want to get up that drone in the air real quick. You want to catch a good sunset, and then you know you're you're you're. You're thinking you're almost at the, at the ready, and then you realize the gimbal cover's still on. So yep. yep. And Stephen Ewing dropped a good one too. Drone laws in your area. I think that's a that's a good thing. You need to be prepared and aware of and, and everything. And of course, you know, for those of us here in the U.S., you know, we're going to have AirSense, and that's going to be something a good thing for us to get used to. Especially, you know, lately I've had a lot of air traffic out there, and then Saturday when I took the Mavic Mini up, a lot of air traffic. Marcus, go ahead. Well, Jaybird makes a good point, and this is easy to forget. I've done it, and I'll bet all you guys have too. You get out there, and either your controller is not charged enough, or even the battery on your drone, you forgot you were so excited to go out flying, you didn't have it charged. Well, here's all you add another one, your smartphone or tablet. Right. Make yeah, sure that's probably it. more often your your phone that can get you easy. Yeah, that'll really get you into into yeah. a sticky situation here. So you know we got a lot to look forward to with this drone. I mean it's it's really going to be uh, I, I think a great drone. I think it's going to provide a lot of benefits to us, and I, I think it's going to be it's going to be a portable drone of choice. I think for me, like if we're going up north or if I'm going traveling somewhere. That's going to be the drone I'm going to look at taking, okay? Um, Let's talk about the elephant in the room here. Go we ahead, Lauren. Go for it. Missing. ADS-B. I, I know right. That's why I just said AirSense. Yeah. Well, ADS-B, there's a lot of people just uh, – I just want to reiterate because uh, I got into a discussion today with some people too, and they, they said they don't want the ADS-B because they don't want people spying on them. AD, the ADS-B used in the DJI drones is an ADS-B in only. So it only receives the information that is being transmitted by all aircraft uh, under the current regulations that went into effect January 1st. If it's in the air uh, and a manned aircraft or requires an ADS-B transmitter, and what the ADS-B in allows you to see those, it doesn't transmit anything. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that because there's been some people that are still adamant that it will transmit your position and your your drone's position and stuff like that. It, it doesn't, okay? Well, that's a great point to bring up, Lauren. I mean, you know, um, all private aircraft here in the United States as of January 1st this year, uh, that includes your, your Cessnas, your Piper Cubs, helicopters, everything up to the, you know, your, your commercial aircraft. Everyone has to have transmit and receive capabilities, um, you know, as far as aircraft are concerned. OK, as far as as this is concerned, like Lauren said, this only receives this does not transmit. So nobody has any idea where you're at just just you know before you know be knowledgeable okay you know one of my wife's big statements is knowledge is power so this is some knowledge and i hope metro drones thank you so much for the super chat we really appreciate that that's that that's fantastic um you know and kind of like i'm getting ready to kind of wrap things up here i mean this was such a good session and you know lon you contributed a lot tonight thank you for that a lot of people in the chat contributed a lot to jaybird uh brought up some good points 
I think I think this is a good kind of a exercise to go through before we a new drone we actually receive it. Okay, you know we cover things. You know, especially you know we talked about you know the charging right away. You know, and you know be 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 knowledgeable about that, Lauren. So Lauren gave us some great knowledge on that. The SD cards we did spend some time on, and I'm going to drop links in the description after we're done here tonight, so you guys can go ahead and check out those cards on Amazon. Um, you know, and also, you know, you know, DJI, what they have recommended there, the minimums. Okay. But remember, you know, what we talked about in this discussion and then all the points that a lot of you brought up in chat tonight were fantastic. Okay. You know, we talked a little bit about cases. We talked about landing pads, um, talked about, you know, making sure things are charged up, talked about some of the calibrations you should do before you go out and fly for the first time as well. Okay. Um, you know, these are all some things, you know, we get into some good habits and, and I think especially for those of you who may be new, this might be your second drone. This may be your first drone. I think these are all good points to take, to, you, know, you know, to kind of soak in and to, and to, and to, and to you know, uh, make sure that you have a good understanding of this before you even, even get your drone. You know, so, you know, my suggestions are, you know, if you want to look for a case now, look for a case now, a landing pad, you know, get some of these things prepped up because the 12th is going to hit here and most of it's... I expect most of us are probably going to get them by that time. Those of us that, you know, that kind of were, were, were Johnny on the spot and ordered them as soon as they, they were, it was available on the website. So um, let's go to closing thoughts. Lauren, you can go first. Um, nothing other than I think for, for the most part, you guys can really enjoy the drone. Uh, it, it's, it's a really nice drone. Um, as usual, it, it handles like a DJI drone. So um, that being said, uh, I'm going to be wishing everybody a farewell for a while. Um, I've got a lot of big things coming up, uh, and I'm going to do a little name drop here, so so to speak. But uh, one of the things is is that the beginning of next month, I'm organizing an international event, um, and that's starting to take up time trying to arrange all of that and uh, there's there used to be what was called international drone day that has now kind of become defunct and so i started a new movement uh, late last year it's called uh, drones for good international and we will be um, doing a fly-in and we um, highly endorse people doing a safe and legal fly-in in in your local location. The group can be found on Facebook. It's, like I said, it's called Drones for Good International. Um, And what it is is to kind of highlight all the good things that drones do, despite what the media portrays us as being so. We've got some very, very nice backers, including, um, um, well, of course, Haya and uh, Romeo Dersher from DGI. He's a huge backer for us, and so that's that's been really good. And uh, we've had several large organizations join, so if you want to join, feel free to join. And our annual event will be held the first Sunday of every June. And, um, um, well, tune into the channel and, and have a look on, uh, on what's happening there and you'll get more details as, as time comes along. Uh, between that and some other things that I can't talk about, uh, <laughs> I will probably won't be back until at least July. So, farewell. Thank you for everything, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. We really appreciate that. And so does everybody in the chat as well, too. Mr. Ron Brown. Uh, uh, well, I was going to say, that's a lot he can't talk about all the way to July, but, uh, you know, I'm sure it'll be a lot to report when he does. Uh, he does return to the airways. So we're going to, we're going to miss you. Um, I, uh, I don't have a, you know, a whole lot except to say that uh, I dropped the link in the chat a while back. Uh, we're going to have after party show over at uh, the Philly and Ron show uh, uh, right after this ends. So if you guys aren't doing anything, stop by, check us out. You know, we 
kind of a drone show, uh, you know, uh, a show about nothing really, but a uh, show about nothing that talks about drones somewhat. But Mike does have a big story. Everybody knows he lost his Mavic Mini um, a while back, and uh, somebody found it and brought it back to him. So, uh, yeah, oh, wow. uh, the, 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 the Mavic Mini is back, so uh, he has a good story to tell on that. So uh, if you're interested, stop on by later. Um, we'll be reserving uh, pretzels and refreshments. So, um, you know, uh, uh, all, all are welcome. So I will say, but, oh, uh, Marcus, on your closing, would you cover just a little bit about, we didn't talk about this all, the, the FEMI X8 uh, giveaway for $299 that, uh, about all the names are published. You could tell it better than me, Marcus. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there were a lot of people that wondered about that. And, and of course, all I know, mostly what I know is, was, is on Bill's FEMI X8 SC uh, Facebook page. And there have been a number of people that have signed on to that saying that, hey, they won. So anybody that doubted whether the Banggood was going to actually uh, give people that rebate back down to $299, there were several of them that posted on there. Is it a thousand people? I, I don't know, but uh, I do know that neither Bill or I's order, uh, we, neither one of us won, but uh, yeah. And then, and then for me, uh, geez, I've got a video that I'm going to uh, put up uh, not long after the show here. The, uh, the, the Mavic Mini versus the Mavic 2 Zoom, a little uh, a little tongue in cheek comparison there, uh, and uh, yeah, then working on some other stuff. I'm hoping to get out and fly this week like everybody else, and uh, yeah, just uh, oh, next Sunday night, uh, Drone Seekers uh, live at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday afternoon, I should say. Check out Drone Seekers Live, and uh, you know, with the with those, your the uh, mostly the Spanish expats, but uh, but uh, Steve's from the UK, and uh, a lot of good talk about drones. So uh, uh, we'll see you, Ron. Yeah, we'll see you, Ron. Thank you again for for showing up. First of all, Lauren, thank you for all your knowledge, expertise, sharing, and uh, just you know, you're you're a great guy as far as you know, not only drone knowledge, but photography knowledge. And we really appreciate that. We're going to miss your expertise until July. So, uh, you know, we will personally stay in touch with you, of course. But, um, you know, he, he won't be hitting the airwaves until July. And I think it'll it'll kind of be obvious as far as that's concerned. Um, before before we before we before I close here, you know, I also want to make sure not to be remiss to, you know, we are starting to open up again here in the United States, um, slowly but surely. And, and I think it's good. Um, you know, signs are, you know, there's a lot of positive signs around the world. Um, you know, one of the things that I did tonight was I went out uh, to Johns Hopkins website and there's been 1.8 million, I believe, have recovered from COVID-19 around the world. So, and 187,000 have recovered here in the United States. We also always hear the negative and how many positive, how many deaths and everything. You know, I like to see the positive here. And the positive is there's a lot of people that have recovered. There's a lot of people here in the United States that have recovered. Um, businesses are start to opening again. I know here in Florida, um, restaurants are allowed to go at 25% capacity or serve outside. Um, you know, so there's some signs of life. Things are starting to to pick back up. And I think that's important for us to do that. But we also need to, uh, you know, if you get a chance to thank a first responder, thank a, a person, you know, a medical professional um, who's been working the front lines in this crisis, do do something for them if you if you can. OK, um, you know, you know, and, and always is always, you know, like Marcus has said so well, you know, uh, you know, don't don't beep your horn at that person that's cutting you off right now. You know, let let it pass. Um, you know, maybe that's something that should be a permanent state of mind. Just let let a lot of things pass. Let a lot of things go. You know, they're not important here. You know, what's important is, you know, we're getting through this. We'll get through the other side and it will be a great day to fly again. OK, it really will. And um, I have a video coming out um, and it should be out not long after after I'm done here. So you guys definitely want to check that out. Uh, hop on over to Philly Drone Life to check Ron on that show with Mikey. Mikey's a great guy. You got to love him. So uh, thanks, everyone, for a great evening. And remember, everyone, please be safe. And we'll see you next week.